Um, so the order of business um, is to, um, I'll be seeking, what? Can I pledge allegiance? Oh, we'll do that after. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can only go too, so far with this. So. Um, nominations for chairperson in order for Nominate. the school year 13 14. Nominate Brendan Kinney. I'll second that one. We have a second. That didn't um, take long, did it? No. <laughs> Kimberly, do you mind grabbing that? At least is the, the frame. Um, motion was made for Brendan Kinney and second by, by Kim Gleason and second by Dan House. Um, any discussion? Are you good with that? Can I speak to the motion? <laughs> you may. Um, so we haven't really had a chance to chat about future leadership of the board. Um, it's great to have Rachel here, and I thought maybe as your first order of business is you could serve as chair, Rachel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, thank you. Darn, okay. Um, <laughs> very comfortable. I was going to second the motion there. <laughs> I haven't even to the punch. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a nice try, Brent. I know. Um, <laughs> You know, the, our work is a team effort, and I appreciate the fact that um, so many of you, especially, especially my former vice chair, uh, was so helpful in the last, uh, last year in keeping the board on track and keeping me on track. Um, so as long as we continue to operate as a team, uh, I'm happy to continue to serve as your chair. Um, All in favor? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Five Thanks, Brennan. Look for another year of great leadership. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next order of business is to nominate a vice chair. <laughs> Do we have any nominations? Kim, have you uh, thought about continuing on in that role? I'd be happy. To. Uh, I will nominate Kim. Please no, vice chair. Thank you uh, for proceeding cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? Kim, you want to speak to the motion? No, I appreciate the opportunity. It's a pleasure to work with you, especially closely, Brendan, when we need to. And I do my best to figure out how to do it when you're not here. So thank you. No, I'm happy to do it. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to nominate a clerk. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So is there a motion on the floor? <laughs> Should we describe the clerk duties? I, I, I would like to hear the clerk duties. I wish we had done that before <laughs> Ben left. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty certain what I recall before passing it to Ben, and it was different, and we're so lucky to have him <coughs> doing our minutes mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. So I think his... Um, the biggest part of what he does is make certain that he's taking a look at the minutes when Kimberly's done with them and um, getting her, if we have executive sessions, any actions <coughs> or no action, but when we adjourn and fill in any other blanks. But I think you and he communicate so he gets a first blush at the minutes yes. and then when you two have exchanged, they go to Loretta and she puts them up. Okay. as um, <coughs> draft minutes in advance of us approving them at the next meeting. And on occasion, but rare occasion, when um, Kimberly's not been able to be here, Brendan has, or, or um, Ben, had taken the minutes. Okay. Um, right? That's, did I get most of it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I think, I mean, he's helped tremendously when we've put together the retirement party, um, but that wasn't an official clerk duty. Yeah, it was just he and I ben being, a good being available to do it. Yeah. Um, so that we can, you know, figure out as we get to that retirement party. Well, I'm happy to be clerk. I don't, you, I don't know if I can be a good guy like he is. Are there <laughs> any other <laughs> duties that the clerk has to that do working with missing? central office? No, I think that says, that says I've got it all. a question for clarification, though. Yeah, yeah. Mark, I think in history we used to consider, and this goes back quite a while, that the clerk was the formal one that accepted correspondence from various parties. Mm -hmm. Is that still in effect these days? No, it, it's not. No. Okay, thank um, you. The other duty that I don't think is assigned to the clerk per se, but Ben just sort of stepped up, he signed uh, contracts at times. Right, right. and I remember Part of that I think was just his availability. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't yep. a clerk-like duty. I think so too, because I think this past year, Brendan did it. And Yep. Um, I know I've done it at some point, but I don't know if it was clerk or just available. Um, and in terms of being official response to correspondence, I vaguely remember a little bit of that, David, but we seem to get more correspondence to the full board um, via email these days. And so I don't think it would be a bad 
point of clarification for us as a board to look at that in our communication tools, how we respond in those situations, but I don't think that necessarily has to be a clerk's duty, but more a point of process for us as a board to make a decision on. Mm -hmm. That's true. So is there a motion? Uh, are we okay with that? <laughs> I will ask you, is there any, as a senior member, I would offer it to you if you would be interested. Oh, I, I'm going to pass on All right. <laughs> and I will say, I know it actually used to go to the most junior member. <laughs> but I think Rachel has plenty on her plate right now, unless you feel differently, Rachel. I am more than happy. I think Dan has earned it. I think Dan yeah. has most definitely earned it. Yeah. I just remember when I got sucked into it, it was because Brenda was no longer the least junior person on the board, and then I was the least junior. But I, um, I think it would be great if that works for you, Dan. So is All right, I nomination? nominate okay. Dan House. Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Promptly. <laughs> get, get Any fast? discussion or speak to the motion? I'm happy to do it. I welcome your feedback as I uh, learn the role. This group is shy. Yeah. They probably won't give you yeah, it's no. unnoticed. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Unanimous motion carries. Thank you to the three of you. Thank, Thank you, David, for your you. ongoing guidance and wisdom. So uh, we will now go back to the uh, the first order of business on the agenda, which is um, call to order and flag salute. And so, Rachel, will you lead us in the pledge? Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any comments from the public on items not on the agenda? The agenda is posted. Okay, great. Uh, we took care of item number two, so we're on to the consent agenda. Well, I wanted to actually wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know if this is appropriate time to bring it up or not. I, 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 no, I sent you an email. I sent you an email we, back. You did. Yeah. I didn't see that. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, see, how, see how good I am at being clerk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is not an auspicious beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, about about uh, looking at some other data that was mm -hmm. inspired by our presentation from a while ago. When would be a good time to uh, broach that subject in the meeting? Um, I think How should we do that? I think what I would prefer is if you want, if we wanted to address that tonight, we could address it at the um, point in the meeting where we evaluate the current meeting and talk about our future agenda items, okay. because then we could talk about it in the context of, is this something that the board wants to circle back on? Okay. In terms of looking at more, more data on a report that we've already received. I think that's the okay. crux of what you're asking. Yeah, in essence. Yeah. yeah, and I guess it was technically a, I guess in a way it was a monitoring report. It was right. accompanying a monitoring yeah, report. Right, exactly. Yeah, um, okay. It just in the, in the order of events, would it be okay for us to move up in the agenda the, that ahead of the executive session? Because the executive session, that way we can make sure whatever is appropriate yep. is captured in the yep. minutes. So unless there's an objection to that, then uh, we will move item number seven to item number six before that the executive sense. session. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, any other comments from or acknowledgements from board members? I'd just like to make sure that we welcome Rachel and thank you so much for serving yes. as a member of the board. We're excited to have you join us. Well, thank you. I'm excited to join. <laughs> Looking forward to working with all of you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Great. You're so lucky. All right. Yes. So we will move to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Negative. I think we should pull the minutes of, uh, I believe it's April 1st, because two of us missed a meeting. And vote on those separately? Yes. Do we have, however, a quorum if we do that? Right? We don't won't have a quorum. Three it's members is a quorum. So if... Um, Rachel wasn't on the board then, right? And these guys weren't there? Is that right? And it's an unavoidable technicality. I know. Well, I will say, well, David, at the um, Vermont School Board Association board meetings, I learned that you can still vote on the minutes, even if you, even were if you weren't there, which seems crazy. I think your logic makes more sense. But there was a lawyer that sits in that room with us, <laughs> and she said without question that it's um, okay to vote on minutes 
that you weren't present for. Right. So if that helps us with having a quorum and just That's keeping changed men. from a few years ago because I raised a question at one time and the chair at the time went to the Department of Education and they ruled that uh, if you did not attend the meeting, you could not vote on the minutes yeah, of the meeting. Yeah, it makes sense, to, perfect sense to me. But I was corrected pretty quickly. It was actually the, one of the first things I did at that board meeting. <laughs> Let's Let's get corrected on that point. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently we have new guidance on that. Um, or at least enough to get which a are, reasonable vote and a quorum. Which, which right. are good, good timing for tonight. Right. So um, we'll so if, uh, if I could have a motion on the consent agenda, that would be wonderful. Move we'll to accept as presented. So a second? Second. Kim seconds. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And we are now on to item number four. And the first item uh, under that section is a discussion about new board member orientation. Um, one of the things we wanted to chat about as a group was um, because we have a new member, if there's anything that we would like to try to offer or anything, any suggestions we might have in terms of helping you become more familiar with how we work. Um, I know that you've taken advantage of some professional development opportunities prior to joining the board. Um, and I, and that was very helpful, um, you know, the, the, um, the couple that I have attended. But what I found was the big gap was um, the training on the policy governance mm -hmm. kind of, I felt, skipped that kind of real introductory piece for me. Yeah. Um, so getting a familiarity with monitoring reports, what, Exactly. Are there, how do we use them? Because I felt like that was like a gap um, right. that I still am not sure I totally yeah. um, feel comfortable with yet. Okay. Um, so just even being able to spend some one-on-one -on -one time where I can just ask questions and we can go through and have an example of a monitoring report in front of me with the policy so <laughs> I can see what are you even looking for, what... Um, what do you use mm -hmm. as proof of meeting the policy, not meeting the policy? What what other right. things can I even ask for for a group? Right. Um, you know, because I don't even know what those are. So you'll see some of that tonight because mm -hmm. we actually have a monitoring report tonight to discuss. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a little bit of that in action. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be great for you and I to sit down and talk sort of about the formality of, of you know, how the meetings work, how the, how the monitoring works, um, what kind of evidence we use and talk about using. In fact, most of our conversation is, do we agree with the interpretation? Is this the right evidence? And do we agree that, you know, the poli that, that Mark or the board mm -hmm. even is in compliance with the policy? So um, did you also receive a copy of the Carver book? Yes. So you have a copy? Yes. That, yes. The hardcover you book gave me, yes, you on. passed that to me. Do we so. have another softer book that I think we got workbook. in our training? It was a workbook. I can look for it, Rachel. Okay. Um, we can ask Ben, too, if he may still. Yeah. Oh, it might have predated him. It predated he, him. It was the three of us that had it. You wouldn't have him still have it. I, I thought I, I got it. Maybe you got I, it passed to you. I yeah, I think. Back through, okay, so it's a workbook. So I can look back through now that I know what I'm looking for. He did give me a box of stuff, but so there's yeah. a variety of things so in there, it was and a I don't know what I'm bound. even looking for. I want to say it had a yellow cover, maybe. Okay. Um, but I'll look for mine, and then we'll okay. at least know what we're looking for. If you don't have it, it's not I that we're re look. referring to it as commonly as we used to, yeah. so I'm more than happy to It was to also, um, the VSBA has done a lot of um, kind of intro to policy governance, mm -hmm. and so, which may be different from the one you attended. So we, we can we look could, online and see if yeah, there's one up there when they're introducing it for those who don't, because the work session that we did was, I think, intended for those who are currently operating in it, but to be operating in it, you would have had more of a what is and why would you do it type um, presentation by somebody. So that may exist at the website as one of those um, things that you can just click and play. Yeah. And if not, it might just exist at the VSBA. So I can look into So why don't we do this? Why don't we set up a time for you and I to meet mm -hmm. and talk about sort of the work, uh, the nuts and bolts of the work. I would also encourage you to dig into the hardcover book. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we can get you a copy of the workbook, and then we'll also look on the VSBA website to see if there's any slides of like you know PG 101, and if not, yeah. um, we can 
probably we can contact them and get some resources. Yeah. And I have those types of presentations that I've given before new boards. We were orienting because we had 45 board members. We were orienting <coughs> always a half a dozen a year. Oh, so okay. we could find a set of slides that are, they're not so heady and conceptually you know, challenging to right. understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they play well with, with more with newer board members. So I can okay. send that slideshow to you and yeah. see if that works. That would be fantastic. Maybe just a place to, to begin yeah. a conversation, springboard off of a half a dozen yeah. slides, and, and then to use real examples to talk about what does that mean here in Essex Town. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because I, I think that's, you know, I feel like I'll get a lot quickly, but at the same time I feel like I don't even know what questions I don't know yeah. Right. Yeah. yet. So we were all there once, yeah. <laughs> and some of us are still. <laughs> so I think yeah, we were there for much longer than you were, since you yeah. had I don't know something like eight hours of training ahead of you yeah. uh, before you even yeah. sat here the first yeah. time. So I, I think you're. Um, it's a learning curve, but you are you are headed up the hill quickly. Yeah, I think the key thing is to basically do what I did at the start of this meeting. Brendan, when do we do this? How do we do this? What should we yeah. do? And we all kind of figured out how to make it work. And and, and with Mark having as much experience with PG as he does. Um, every now and then we go, huh, what, what are we supposed to do this? <laughs> David, so, I think David has a comment as well. I was thinking on the way over that uh, it would be good for all of us, especially for the new member, if we were to sit down, work session, one and a half hours, two hours, whatever, and just have a general discussion <coughs> about how the board works, uh, code of ethics, uh, board administration, uh, guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. It would serve as a good review for some of us and good orientation for the. Is that something that could wait till the retreat, retreat in June? It's only six Well, remember, we moved, last year we moved our retreat to <laughs> August. Oh, that's what we did. Um, it's a good point, David. Why don't we... Uh, personal opinion the sooner it's done the better. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. At the same time, I think, well, geez, it could that roll. So it's... Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. But ten o'clock tonight. But it also <laughs> depends on what you expect. Let me let me think about that suggestion. I think it's a good yep. one. So let me just see if we can figure I just out throw it out for discussion. Yeah, no, it's I think yeah. it's a good it's a good idea. There is um that way we all hear the same message. Yeah. yeah. It, again it'd be probably very similar to what you did up in Saint Albans, but there is a training that's sort of mm -hmm. a general board. Uh, um, right. Operation coming in Winooski, I think, soon. But I do think that that's more like what she did in St. Albans, right? And I yeah. think that, that oh, you don't need that again. But it serves that purposes, purpose of reminding existing board members and orienting new board members. It is what Rachel did, but none of us were able to attend with her. Right. Um, that So if whatever version of this comes to be for us, we may want to look at it on our calendar for the year, is there something we're going to try and attend all five of us, um, seek out a professional development opportunity at which all five of us mm -hmm. will participate together as a group. Right. And I can see where that can be beneficial just from the meeting up in St. Albans to see the groups that they were together and they they could discuss it. Hear it like they just hear so it all together. Exactly. And, you know, case scenarios. And it was just, they could talk it within a different framework yeah. than mm -hmm. I could. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Right, so I think that's a. I mean, I think that'll be a good start, and then part of it is just sort of going through the motions and and seeing how meetings work and seeing how we we do the work. So that's another big part of it. So I'll follow up with you after this meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is a. Can I scroll past it? Sorry. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> Is this one that you want to tee up, Mark? On sure. The, uh, policy um, on the ends policy 1.1 and 1.3. Yes. So let me just sit back for about 90 seconds. We'll set some context for you. Great. Okay. <laughs> 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 I thought I said 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Lights, camera, action. <laughs> You're at the edge of their seats, Ellen. <laughs> there we go.
Thanks to Lisa Barry and Colleen Williams who was in peace home with children tonight. Um, and actually Jane Olison Jane did that Jane one. Jane Olison. That's Jane's work. That's great. <laughs> and Jane. Yeah. More from Lisa to come later this evening. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> just the drum roll. Oh, there you go. The next few minutes, we want to we'll look at some other samples of work. But we thought, you know, Jane had a great idea and, and put together a way to set the context for the, the, the discussion that will ensue tonight, and also in the future as we as we build momentum, and, uh, being able to use a celebration of learning to really show, especially 1.1 and 1.3, um, mm -hmm. being showing kids being able to show moms and dads. Um, the work they've um, put together on con con the content um, based on what's soon to be the Common Core state standards, um, how they've used digital tools to um, um, learn about the content, um, learn ways in which to pr present their information in an articulate um, way that really shows the learning that's occurred over the last number of months that they've been in the classroom. Ellen's going to facilitate a conversation shortly would you involved with that in terms of what you pulled away as parents and hopefully to some degree as board members. It doesn't look like it did last year in terms of the board having direct direct inspection of 20 or so and we recognize that, that you were disadvantaged some way as, as parents, first and foremost, the most important being parents, then being able to see other pieces of work um, as a board member I know might have been challenging. So we're going to continue to think about how do we provide that opportunity next year so you can see not only videos but also more directly some of the work that is happening. This is also tonight, it's not about the celebration of learning. You saw a survey that went out for me a couple of weeks ago. It got some really, really great feedback. I have some of that information if you're interested tonight. Overall, I think we would consider it a success. Um, it's um, for the first year out, I think we, we learned a lot um, and how we can do things differently next year so that we have a greater representation across the district and across grade levels and teams um, and to be able to show and highlight student work that shows growth over time, not just a snap, snap, snapshot in time. And that was one, un, one of the things that we discovered that we didn't, not all parents were able to see growth over time. It was just what happened over the last few weeks. Um, again, we learned a few lessons and the feedback from parents was overwhelmingly helpful um, so we can, we can grow this in the future. So what I'd like to do is just turn it over to Ellen to show you some more samples of work and then facilitate a discussion with the board on, on what you saw as relates to 1.1 and wh what you probably remember from last year is you did a survey, you know, and you had projects that you looked at. Um, we actually, Lisa, Barry, and Colleen Williams um, were out in, in force, I guess is the best way to put it, with video cameras and whatnot. And they took a lot of video and a lot of picture. Jane Olison was also taking pictures as well. So we have a lot of pictures. <laughs> and we actually have a lot of video, but what we found was that as we put the video together, the voices in the room were, were many. So you get that clatter, you know, in the background. So we also know we need to buy a, a better microphone system to use. So we're going to show you some pictures, but um, you're not going to get as up close to a project as you did last year, where you could lean over, ask the kids, talk to them at this particular point. But I'm going to hand this out to you. I know just Kevin Mays was also taking pictures. Oh yeah, we had everybody taking pictures. Well, There's yeah. more pictures of the celebration of learning. The other thing to remember is that the full month report happens in September now of every year, yeah. and so there'll be snippets of this. Just a sort of a piece of evidence. This is not a monitoring report per se. Rachel is just an update on some of the things that we learned and some of the things that you have. And to it's talk actually about. two monitoring reports because it's 1.1, which is about subject matter, sort of understanding your academic knowledge, and then 1.3 is the integration of technology. Right. So it's those two things that we kind of highlighted. We went back. The statements that you see on here come out of the survey. Actually, they come out of a performance task rubric that we use. And it's actually looking at those. And these were the ones that we felt the pictures began to highlight a little bit. But what I want you to do is just read them over a little bit. I'm going to show you a couple minute video. It's not too, too long. Um, it's a Wii video. So I don't know if you know that tool or not, but it is a free tool and it is a collaborative video movie maker. You can make it with your friends kind of thing. And that's what we did. We all sat together and made one to their friends. So again, thanks to Lisa and Colleen. Colleen, yeah. <laughs> and Jane. Along with Jane Olson. And Jane. Jane was a choreographer on this one too. Um, so when you do that, just be thinking about the things that are on the paper. And then what I'd like to do is just have an informal conversation from you. Yep. What do you notice? What do you see? What are your takeaways? What are your questions? And we just have a conversation. Since it wanted to play a minute ago, I'm sure it's going to want to play now. Is the volume okay? 
It will be. It was okay. Yeah. Can you hear oh, it yeah, now, Bruce? No. <laughs> <laughs> So that was just a little reminder of some of the things that you saw. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if people want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my overwhelming feeling was I missed what we did last year. You know, the way we were almost, almost forced to, you know, or directed to go to different sites. So it, it was nice to see some of that, but you don't really see with your individual child. Yeah, yeah. I know, so I, yeah. I don't mind, I saw her, but I've seen all Lauren's classmates there. But I didn't see any of the other middle school stuff. And I did, you know, I went down to elementary. I figured, geez, I don't have any kids down there anymore. I gotta go down and see what's going on down there. So I wandered around there a little bit. Um, but yeah, I missed having that. Uh, well, I thought what we did last year was great. Yeah. Um, even though in some ways it was kind of weird and it was still challenging, like, wait, what am I, where am I supposed to go next? But mm -hmm. having that uh, direction to different, yeah. to really be able to interact with the kids more yeah. was neat. But what we saw it was, it was fun. So this, this clip obviously is just a, a clip. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so part of the, the, the talk tonight should be about, you know, how do we improve the evidence piece? Yeah. But is there anything that in addition to seeing what you saw with your son or daughter, that you can reflect on and did this sort of activate some of that thinking in terms of what you saw on the 9th of, or the, the 9th of April? Yeah, I mean, I think that when I look at the talking points, I, you know, in my individual meetings with um, two of my kids, I wasn't able to get to all three, um, which was part of the challenge. Yeah. Um, we had to divide and conquer. Um, definitely saw all of these things demonstrated in my individual sort of show and tell with my my kids um, and it was you know sort of based on where they were you know obviously a second gra or first grader is going to show me something different than a than a fourth grader or a third grader so um, I think that for some parents you know I, I had the board member hat on and I had the parent hat on I think for some parents it would have been great to almost to have some sort of an overview of like this is what you're going to experience and maybe uh -huh. they had it and uh -huh. I just wasn't part of that but I almost felt like it would have been great if all the parents had been able to sort of be there to get some sort of overview or presentation or, or introduction by the teacher and then to break off with their individual students and, and have that walk through. Uh -huh. um, I also felt like um, 
some teachers, you know, there was a different approach taken per classroom. And so one experience was really positive and organized and, and the other was less so. Um, and so I don't know, that may lead to, you know, different levels of sort of satisfaction with that experience from a parent perspective. Um, and so I don't know if there's any way to kind of streamline that, but it felt in some ways to be sort of disjointed from one classroom to the next. But I felt like in everything that I saw as a parent, um, all of these things were demonstrated to me through the student work that I was able to see um, mm -hmm. of my own student and then also of their classmates. So, um, but I did, to some, you know, I, I did, did miss the opportunity to interact with students that I didn't know mm -hmm. and the opportunity to ask them questions about their work. So if it was a way to sort of merge those two experiences, right. Um, that would be sort of the best of both worlds from a board member and a parent perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's my sort of overall Great. Yeah, no, observation. Good. Other thoughts, other thinking? The, um, the idea, and I think I've thought about this before as we gather evidence as a board for our outreach to the community or otherwise, if we have the opportunity to sort of feed people the questions, parents, the questions to ask their kids, mm -hmm. um, the talking, these type of talking points, are you seeing this in the work you're seeing? Um, it will bring more of a conversation probably out of the student about telling me more about mm -hmm. what you learned through this process or why did you do this? I mean, some parents have a natural dialogue that is inquisitive in that way and right. others may not have that or really know that that was part of what they would be looking for. <coughs> so that would be a great tool for parents to have, yeah. if not done in an overview format, even a sort of handout when you come in. Right. And I think, um, I remember in the elementary schools when we did these sorts of things like open houses, they kids went through sort of a checklist mm -hmm. of stuff. Even in that though, it doesn't necessarily give parents the language for bringing more conversation right. out of the student about their experience in it. And if that's the purpose of this type of a celebration, that it be the student's opportunity to share their learning, yeah. I think helping to guide that for I, I, all parents. I think that the two, the two classrooms that I was in, both teachers had, had set up the students so that they had a checklist. And it was pretty fun to have my first grader with his clipboard yeah. and his pencil <laughs> and checking off the, yeah. the different things that, you know, and so, it, you know, it was really empowering, I think, for him mm -hmm. to have that experience where he's in charge and I'm following his lead mm -hmm. and for him to walk me through. I had to sort of remind him, you know, I think you skipped number three. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that was a pretty neat experience that, that you know, uh, for example, like Kids in the Edge, I mean, that's sort of the whole purpose of how they approach it. I mean, we're used to seeing yeah. presentations and seeing them be very organized and direct their own conferences with you, and, and their, te their facilitator sort of is there. Um, but it was fun to see that kind of a spirit where the student was sort of running the show mm -hmm. uh, in different classroom settings. That, that was one of the... One of the objectives clearly was student centered. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's our yeah. you know, it's a, that's mm -hmm. the, you know, our vision. Right. And uh, right. And, and, it, and and that's sort of the spirit of the celebration of learning is that kids should be in control of their own mm -hmm. learning. Yeah. And they should be able to articulate how they got from point A to point B. And what's interesting is the three that have commented, you you've, we've talked about the celebration of learning and how can we improve that and mm -hmm. and, and that's sort of where we're we don't I don't want to get stuck on that one because we recognize we've got to improve the celebration of learning and that's a means to an eventual end, and, and what I'm hearing is that the evidence is still not robust enough because of the way it was structured, and we need yeah. to improve upon that. Um, and so in addition to direct inspection, which is a whole other way of approaching it, and it was incentivized big time to get Last teachers yeah. to get be part of that, yeah, yeah. College, college credit, iPads, <laughs> you know, and, and we don't <laughs> have those types of resources to ask 120 teachers to do that. Right. right. So in order to move it, you know, we've got to we've got to go about it with not without those types of incentives. And I think through the celebration of learning and opportunities to see growth, because it did happen in lots of parts. How do yeah. we sort of exploit that mm -hmm. and make that the expectation <coughs> across the district? That's the work. Mm -hmm. But getting back to the evidence piece, did again, did, and maybe not. Was there anything there as a parent or otherwise? what you've already stated, stated that you saw some of that in place 
based on your understanding of 1.1, or at least how I've interpreted 1.1 and 1.3. Mm -hmm. So you have the use of the integrated use of technology as a as a piece. We try to capture that in the pictures, but the hard part is it's, it's always everybody looking at a screen that you see. can't quite yeah. read. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, yeah. That um, that doesn't. Right. Yeah. That wasn't you really have. To, yeah. You really way. have to get that. You have to get that from. So tell me about your project. You right. know, and then yeah. you get that interaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so did you find that? Though? Did you find the fact that kids were using technology? Oh, they were definitely. Well, I certainly yeah. walk around the edge. I certainly saw that. I even saw it down in elementary. I don't know how much they were using it, but those kids who did have parents there were playing on the iPads. <laughs> um, so hey, they were using technology. Um, <laughs> but uh, the um, yeah. challenge at the middle school anyway was the speed of the, the internet of getting no no getting up the oh. whatever it was she mm -hmm. was gonna show me because everybody was on at once mm -hmm. that took oh. forever and mm -hmm. then to yeah. hear it mm -hmm. was impossible. So I chuckled a little bit when you said to show us video didn't make sense because you couldn't hear. Right. As a parent you could not here. Right. So that was sort of a logistical. Oh, so when some when your student sitting to with show you a video, Abby trying to listen hear. to what was happening on the video, you could not hear anything. And that was in the That's classroom. And that was in the classroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was um, that was a. It's 150 powered up all at once. Yeah, right. everybody powered up. Every everybody trying to listen to their kids. Like, does it go louder, Abs? <laughs> <laughs> it was really. I was like, it's really cute. <laughs> so, but um, but. I think that was a logistical yeah. thing we to be considered that, that I'm not sure if we yeah. can get yeah. beyond if all 70 or whatever are in a mm -hmm. team or all 150 in a building are trying to do it at once. Mm -hmm. Is there a better way to um, distribute people throughout the building right. timing wise? Yeah. Because of I, I know yeah. like one of the things that I know is <laughs> yeah. right off the in the edge is they started just timing the presentation so it was back and forth so you never had one presentation going on and yeah. at first like the first go in and you've got the the two groups in that one room trying to do the presentation at the same time and they quickly learn that okay this isn't working nobody yeah. can ask nobody can hear nobody can ask questions yeah. it's very hard and they started doing that but it was yeah it was learn, something yeah. that they learn. were working through yeah. throughout the day yeah. um, and I think that's where the facilitators help do that but one um, thing I oh go ahead I'm sorry no, I was just going to say, I didn't see technology use as much at EES, but I wouldn't have expected it right. quite in the same way anyway, but it was very interesting in the way that, and I think it probably, again, went teacher by teacher, but, you know, to see my daughters, and I was looking at it as a parent, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. um, but seeing, you know, like she had the whole binder that showed work from the beginning of the school year through, so you could mm -hmm. see the writing development, mm -hmm. you could um. see the way her stories were developing throughout the process, which to me as a parent, I was interested in that and I could see that. I don't know if every parent got the same thing because we weren't, uh, again, wasn't something we were necessarily given the instruction to look for, but I just instinctively yeah. knew. You know, that's a good that. point. There was definitely um, the checklist and the walkthrough, but I, it wasn't clear to me, unless, I, unless it was dead obvious, that this is where I started and this is where yeah. I am now. Yeah. And it would have been good for maybe the student to, or maybe it was and it just didn't come through for my kids, but mm -hmm. To be able to show me the progression that they made, like here's where I was, here's where I was at the beginning of the year, and this is what I did last week. Like if if that's part of the goal, then I think the student needs to be better prepared to show that. Right. So and I, I mean, think this stuff was actually date stamped, so you yeah. could see, nice. mm -hmm. and it, it it made it very easy for me to see. So one of the things that was different from last year, where we had a contained group of teachers who were taking a grad course whose project was to be part of the learning exposition yeah, for you. <laughs> we had a couple others. others. But, um, but one of the <coughs> things that I think the, the goal for this year was to, um, in some respects, cast it out so people could interpret it. And that meant the teachers, too. They would mm -hmm. interpret it in a way that made sense for them to sure. showcase what their kids are doing. And so what happened in most buildings was grade levels or teams got together and said, this is how we'll do it. Mm -hmm. And so they did, and they tried it out. And so I think what you'd find um, beforehand was sort of like, oh my gosh, is this even gonna work, you know, kind of mm -hmm. thing, what's it gonna look like? And then afterwards, sort of this sense of, wow, that did work, this needs tweaking or whatnot. So I think right now we're in this, mm -hmm. this phase of, of people were excited, there was a lot of, en a lot of energy in mm -hmm. all the buildings and all the classrooms. Um, we went all around to every grade level to see them. Um, 
But now is that sort of, now I have a picture in my head of what it could look like, and now the next piece is what could we even make it look mm -hmm. like better? Like how mm -hmm. can we get it so that the kids have more ownership or that the teachers make sure that people are sort of front loaded with the info they might need? Right. Mm -hmm. Those are all easy yeah, to yeah. do. The first piece was the major concern in the, across the district was where will they park? <laughs> so once we got past that, that wasn't that, an issue. Then, um, then people began to discover yeah. like what could we do on that day. So I think there's been a process for all of us. Yeah, there are a number of factors that were tangled up in the conversation that we knew were going to be you know, parking. <clears throat> this is no substitute for parent conferences. You're right. I mean, so a lot of that got thrown into the mix, which you know I think that hopefully we're over over some of those hurdles at this point. But, uh, and then we tried to, you know, have schedules across the three buildings so that a parent with three children could hopefully get to all three we'll of their children, you know, that kind of. So there was there was a lot of things there. Sure. And we were holding true, if you think about it, to last year's schedule, which was we were doing it on voting day. I mean, mm -hmm. we really wanted the, the parents out in mm -hmm. the schools on the day that they would make a decision about the school budgets and other things, too. Right. And maybe that's right or not right. I don't know at this point. That actually probably confounded it because everybody was contained on that day. Right. So now you have two children you can mm -hmm. see and you can't get to your third one because we, we only have so many hours in the day to right. actually strategize yeah. around. And um, in the not substituting the parent-teacher conference sort of category in a situation where it would have consumed many hours to have tried to attend multiple mm -hmm. students, um, that didn't end up working out for my husband to be able to do it all. But when we schedule conferences back to back and approach teachers early on, which is the way we've typically right. been able to do it, then a, then that hour or so could be carved out as opposed to a couple mm -hmm. of hours. So it did make it harder for that to be the exchange this year, but understanding that that's mm -hmm. not the exchange mm -hmm. next year. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think ha still having somehow having that student conference. Yeah availability is very important for a lot of people. I think um, when I look at the, the purpose of the, of the celebration of learning from a board perspective, it's an opportunity for us to sort of uh, have evidence about 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.3. From that perspective, not talking about logistics or parking or what did you, what did you and your team learn about whether or not this was a this met the goal for for that for that other purpose. Yeah, I, I think we were generally pleased at yeah. a scale of one to four. We were probably in the two and a half to three uh, yeah. range. Uh, we weren't wowed by any means. We could d we clearly saw what some of you saw in a more limited way, and that the, the better prepared we were, the more uh, better executed teachers were at the classroom level. Um, but I I believe in my short you know, almost three years here that I've seen a, a certainly an increase in, in the use of digital tools to, to further a child's learning and them taking the, the, the initiative through guidance, facilitation, and teaching from educators to be more facile with technology. Um, I've seen an increase, and partly it's because we put machines in the hands of kids, but I also believe when you hear teachers talk, especially at the middle level, they're blown away with what kids are coming out of founders, for example, already knowing. Mm -hmm. and they would have to take a part of the beginning of every year to show them how to navigate. Mm -hmm. And they're coming from founders, starting to some degree at the elementary school, much, much more prepared and comfortable in that environment. Uh, and I've seen that. And again, that's the anecdotal. Um, and, and having gone through to many class classrooms, I was really impressed with students' ability to talk about where they've been, from mm -hmm. kindergartners to kids in middle school, in terms of what their journey's been like from, from September until April. Um, but again, it wasn't consistent across the district, and partly is because of just it's it's novel, it's new. We don't all teach that way, and but we're, we will get there. I'm still not. I still struggle a little bit, quite honestly, as a superintendent, with what's the evidence piece on this one. I agree, Dan, that in the ideal world we would have those because for you have, have a chance to interact with kids, not one of your own, um, is a very powerful experience that I think would really go a long way in demonstrating to you as a board member where, what we're trying to accomplish with kids are able to do. So we'll need to, we need to think about that more. Can we do some staging around that type of concept next year? Um, and perhaps we can. And that's the work of the leadership team to figure out how to do that. And I think for me, um, and Lisa can speak to this too, because I know she went in lots and lots of classrooms as well, but I didn't have a child. So I was in and I was subbing in for kids who didn't have parents there or whatever. So I saw a whole lot of kids yeah. telling me a whole lot about what they did in school 
from um, the science experiment that Jen Button's classroom was putting on here to uh, watching the class that um, Heather Dunn's math class. Actually, they were all doing literacy. I loved it. But anyway, they, um, <laughs> they, uh, the sixth grade team, the Kiva team, the kids had decided that they wanted their parents to see a class in action. So it looked different than having a kiddo walk me through something. Mm -hmm. But once I knew that, once Heather said that to me, then I knew that I was to kind of listen in and I could ask the kiddos, what's going on here? Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. So it was really great. I had kindergartners with their iPads mm -hmm. out. I had them um, playing math games on the floor. Um, the second graders, um, the second grade team at, at EES, their kids had created literacy portfolios and it was bigger than a checklist. You know, it was, they had yeah. binders from the beginning of the year to the end and they just took it over. Mm -hmm. The teachers were off to the side and the kids were in charge and they had spread out into the whole um, Kiva section, the whole, you know, uh, shared space too as well. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of different pieces. Of, I did persuasive writing in fifth grade. I mean, there were just a lot of things when I think about it. And kids were sharing that, sometimes on a computer screen, sometimes on paper, sometimes not. But I guess what I heard were voices. I heard a lot of kids' voices talking about what they were doing. I did, nobody was shy. You know, they may not have had every answer on the book, but everybody was really engaged in what they were doing. That to me, and the, the noise was actually kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of sound in all the buildings. And Lisa, you can probably add and I, that. I mean, I would, I would chime in, too, that, that I wish we could have captured some of the voices better than we were, you know, by having, you know, areas set up that we could have actually done some maybe interviews. You know, we talked about it afterwards, you know, going back around and talking to some kids. I also um, acted as a parent for several kids as I went around, you know, and I think a lot of the teachers did an excellent job making sure they're, that every student in their class got to, got talk to share to somebody. with somebody. Sure. Um, so even if a parent couldn't show up or somebody couldn't show up for them, and I think that speaks highly of classroom teachers that mm -hmm. saw the importance of this as well and, um, and really made sure that all the kids felt like they were part of it and not just the ones that had parents that came in. And K through five, um, all the classrooms that I went in, the, the turnout was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. they, they were might be down two or three parents in a classroom, right. but it was pretty much the majority of the kids had some family members there with them or were sharing their family yeah. members with other people. But for the most part, I asked what the turnout was and they, the teachers knew you know, how many were there. I think it went down a little bit at the middle school, but there's and several reasons that might be. <laughs> and this is one way, and there's, again, yeah. multiple ways probably to present data to the board that shows the growth that, of children. One of the things that we were not able to pull off this evening just because it just, we were not able to pull it off and look at Kathy because we were a little plan that we were collaborated on is that um, one of the um, pieces of writing that kids have been working on this year, I believe in fifth grade, is, is I think it's argumentative writing as a or argument, argument. right? We don't like to call okay. it argumentative. <laughs> <laughs> That's a argument, right. maybe, <laughs> <laughs> there are two fifth grade kids who go to school here who um, I had the privilege of sitting down with and they both read to me a piece of their writing and they're both students um, on, on our fifth grade team. Um, and the, the, their argument was extremely <laughs> compelling um, and well written and well taught. Um, and so much so that I was going to try to try to pull, up, pull it off that they were able to visit with the board tonight. Um, and so compelling w were they that the articles have helped influence my thinking mm -hmm. as a superintendent and what I can do differently about a couple of different program areas, um, which I won't take tonight to, ex to talk about because I think we should try to get them here to the board. Anyway, and so in addition to the celebration of learning, is again, like Carly Epstein did mm -hmm. several months ago, it really showed pieces of student work with students hopefully present so that voice is there but also the artifact of where the kid has come from not not even know how to approach a piece of writing like that to the point where they're, they're now influencing the superintendent on his thinking around program areas and that's really powerful stuff that you know I think we can showcase to the board not as a show and tell as much as it is to show where students were coming into fifth grade and where are they now in April having wrote, written a really cogent piece of writing that is influential and very powerful. I, I'm curious, you know, the couple of comments about you got to be a parent, <laughs> you got to be a parent kind of thing. Um, is, has but then she got to go home. You know, yeah. <laughs> 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 got to give, give them back. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and obviously, obviously we've gotten feedback from parents who were here, and I'm, I'm just thinking still about the parent who wasn't here. Uh, is, is there anything that, to bring them into the process to yeah. 
whether it's a, a parent teacher conference for the parent that wasn't here or you know what's what's being is there any being anything and again that's, a, done that's that. an agenda item all to itself but we we prevented that from happening in all cases and again we we've got some ideas on how to do that better next year um, there's always there's always going to be a percentage of parents if it's evening or or in the morning right. afternoon we're just not going to get them here but we have to keep trying to figure that out we hosted a couple of um, meetings happened to be under the auspices of title one but i don't mm -hmm. think it was i think it was beyond title one in terms of uh, yeah. ways that were approaching math and it was extremely well attended um, here at founders memorial school um, and so there are other ways to get moms and dads in and this in the celebration of learning is just one of many but we've got to continue to to brainstorm um, i think keep there's a fair amount of people who still don't have sick days and that's time right. off so it wasn't that they didn't want to be that's right yeah. mm -hmm. one of my classrooms only had 50 percent of the parents coming it yeah. was really hard to see the kid looking to the door yeah. to see if their that's parent right. was coming right. so i just mm -hmm. think we need to be sensitive to the mm -hmm. title one population we have not everybody right. gets paid time off right and we had a group of parent teachers who met in the evening and those parents didn't show up in the evening either so there are it's just sometimes the population of parents who just can't get to school so mm -hmm. how do we how do we support their inclusion in, in, in more innovative ways right so that's that's that thanks yeah. for your yeah. feedback you. and conversation look forward to a more formal presentation at the end of the school year. So, cool. Any other questions? I just, um, Mark, as you mentioned the use of technology and if that, the, the probing questions seem to speak to way more than that because I think I'm becoming indoctrinated into our culture here that the use of technology is so secondary that that policy can almost eventually go away because it's not really, it's happening in everything we're doing. It's not doesn't have a stand almost its own self anymore right. so as you mentioned that I thought yeah sure I saw technology <laughs> I mean that did it almost didn't occur to me as being something to have been necessarily looking for although I know in the purposes of demonstrating that policy I'm taking it for granted frankly so I'm not sure that I saw that as the priority for um, what I was to take away either as a parent or as a board member mm -hmm. Um, and maybe that's part of it, again, sort of back to having everybody understand what the goal of the and the purpose of the, the session or however it will be structured another time would be parents included so that we can do a better job of um, really engaging with our kids on the things we should be looking for as parents, aside from what we might look for as board members. Yeah. And it, it did have the feel of an open house to me, yeah. so it, mm -hmm. in that vein, um, I'm wondering if our fall open houses in the evening are better attended, and if um, teacher conferences, however those will happen, happening at a time that isn't where people are only going to talk about placement, but you know, maybe March or sometime earlier, so it's not mm -hmm. focused on that. And the celebration that happened on voting day, or wh wherever this is going to happen another time, maybe it is different. Maybe it's that three to seven arts thing that happened before that wasn't just the technology right. things but a celebration of the arts I think people came out for that and it felt like we could invite our community to experience it mm -hmm. yeah. maybe a little differently than the things that are happening with parents just seeing their kids stuff and that mm -hmm. I felt a little worried about missing out on this year because um, I don't know how much of our community chose to go in and sit on those things but when they come to vote if they have some opportunity to see why they should be willing to spend 20 million dollars yeah. when they don't have children in the district I, I felt a little um, as though that piece was missing um, I do too. Yeah. and yeah. so I'd love for us to find a way whether it's a separate thing because maybe that's now gonna be the music arts thing that happens at the end of the year or something different on voting day but um, but maybe it's maybe it's the same thing held at a different time, or maybe it's a different thing. But I missed that piece. Yeah. I think yeah. that's I a really too. good point. This year, the our fine arts people did the big show at CCSU yes. right before that, yeah. mm -hmm. so they were yeah. they had just finished the big show, so it just didn't work out yep. this year. Yeah. But that I think is yeah, a really I mean, good point. That that idea yeah. of being able yeah. to invite in the community yeah. is really important. Or maybe if we um, ask them just to be prepared to reset the stuff up I, you know yeah. if because we can't we I don't think we have a lot of opportunity to influence the fine arts thing that happens at the high school mm -hmm. 
timing wise and we have right. no opportunity to change right. our voting so it may be if that timing is not great for us again next year maybe we just ask them to not reinvent the wheel but would they be able to, to um, display again celebration light yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> well, we could even yeah. you know, put on just more of our stuff i mean just just our middle school and our uh, well, that's what they did yeah. before. They yeah. had the chorus and the yeah. band, yeah, and they had the, and the, the the little kids, the, the little kids, yeah, and everybody and sang. Yeah, so right. it, it, um, they even had the Iron Chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's they did have Iron Chef. They yeah. did Iron have Chef, little snacky think, things you know, going on. That's yeah. a great way to again bring there's in. There's a lot of things that aren't just sports kids. or music, or there's so many club opportunities. This year, we, you know, my decision was to make it a centralized thing because it was a big new thing. We wanted to make sure we had equity and made sure we all were participating. But I think the key is going to be to decentralize in the future and make it more building based and mm -hmm. be able to build the, the program around what the, the norms, the age of the kid, right. the population of parents that we serve, faculty who are, are working hard and, and uh, have a common theme, a standard that's set at the district level, but that we work closely with building administration and educators on what it might look like in our respective buildings. Mm -hmm. Trying to pull it off for, you know, um, you know nine grades um, is tough. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, but we felt we needed, I felt we needed to do it this year, and we'll, we'll decentralize that more next year. The middle schoolers are definitely different. I thought about that being a parent oh, just of middle schoolers yes. now. <laughs> and, you know, eighth graders aren't thrilled to necessarily have you come in and look at all of their stuff. But I'm sure that that's not uncommon. I think once I was there and we were doing it anyway, <laughs> it was an enjoyable experience. But they do bring stuff home, too, as part of what my eighth grader did that has always happened around conferences that is a portfolio of stuff to yeah. go through. Which is an awesome tool yeah. because one of the, one in interesting our home, pieces of data that we received, and we don't do know that. how to make sense of it yet, we will, is that 45% of the 17% of the people who responded. Um, <laughs> who's the math guy? <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. I got it. I got it. Where's Roger? That's something <laughs> around less than that's 9%. Eight, that's 8%. That's 8%. Yeah. Eight, that's eight, that's eight percent. <laughs> yeah. So we feel that they learned anything new about their kid. So that's an interesting. That's interesting. They did, or they didn't. They didn't. They didn't not. learn anything yeah. really. That might be. That might be because it felt like an open house, and there really wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't the span of, of of months, but it also might suggest that parents are engaged. Um, yeah. uh, save you know that percentage of parents that are it's difficult for them to be involved for lots of reasons. But that was sort of I, I looked at it as a positive yeah. thing. Yeah. So yeah, my experience at the edge is. Well, I helped Lauren with that project, so yeah. I kind of knew what it was, and I went and asked her all the questions that I that I wanted her to be able to answer. But I was asking them so that kind of rehearsing her. But then my interest was in the other twenty yeah. displays at the edge. I was like, wow, this is all pretty well, cool. Join Ellen next year. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Except I do realize that uh, with a sixth grade boy, that I completely wrecked his social game. But I didn't pick up on the cues until about ten minutes in, when one of his friends walked by and said. Your mother is divine. And I went, <laughs> oh no. <Yeah. laughs> and I said, I will leave you. You go do your thing. <laughs> Too funny. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I right. did talk with, um, there was another EM, EMS mom who just said it was a great opportunity for her to be able to go in because, I don't know, I, I've got too many EMS. Mm -hmm. I've got, you know, she just felt that there's not as many opportunities as an EMS parent to go into the school, yeah. and I'm not sure if she had one of those where she saw the classroom, but she just felt that that was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. great. And the well, group stuff is cool. When you get to see the yeah. stuff that your kid is working on in mm -hmm. school that they're doing with others, that was right. really fun. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks for all that feedback. That's yeah, great. thank you. And thank you, Ellen. Um, so moving, moving along to the next item on the agenda, we have um, a monitoring report on 2.4 financial planning and budgeting, which all of you received in your packets and hopefully had a chance to review. Do you want to tee us up at all? Sure. And Roger will come join us and answer any questions. Board Hello, have. Roger. <laughs> what did you think of the open house uh, <laughs> celebration <laughs> morning? Did you hang out with the math kids, Roger? <laughs> 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 So uh, this is a monitoring report, um, Rachel, called 2.4, and, and uh, it's been positioned at the end of the year for the last two years. Um, it's a fairly straightforward report, um, I think. Um, uh, I shall not cause or allow financial planning for any fiscal year or remaining part of the fiscal year to deviate materially mm -hmm. from the ETSD ends policies, risk financial jeopardy, or fail to derive, be derived from a multi-year plan. Um, 
highlighted in your report uh, tonight are in, I think it's yellow, mine's yellow. Um, and we started this last month to highlight the changes that have occurred since the last time you saw the report, which would have been April of 2012. Um, so I'll, I can run down a few of these for you and then just open it up for questions should there be any from the board. Um, one piece of evidence that I wanted to point out to you that was, again, just to remind you, you're well aware of it, is that when we inadvertently um, need to spend outside of the budget, um, that we make sure that we've got, you know, we've got the, the resources necessary to, to, um, to take on those unanticipated costs. And the example I used this past year is that we've had, um, we added a, um, actually a kindergarten teacher in a fourth grade position the year before. Um, we also, as the board has been told, the budget development process have, have um, added 4.5 new paraeducators over the last year um, to address the needs of special education that were un, unbudgeted for. Um, so that's a, um, something that I felt was a piece of evidence that was necessary. Um, we also um, have a list uh, that you've seen before of the capital improvement facilities um, maintenance reserve fund specific um, items that need to be addressed over the next year and tonight we'll talk a little bit about building security as one of those one of those items um, on page two under number four um, Roger brought forward in a, um, an update to the board um, other additional funds that we found that didn't find but were um, given through were granted through IDAB um, and Title I this year, and that was in a report to the board um, at some point earlier on. Uh, we also got a small startup grant from the uh, Vermont Community Foundation Foundation to start uh, our preschool program. Um, and just for the record, uh, I don't think I put it in the incidentals that we just received another $20,000 from the same organization to continue to support um, universal access for our preschoolers. Um, and that's for next year. Thanks to Jessica Little for her advocacy, mm -hmm. saying we're really good at what we do, and they said you're right. Here's another twenty thousand. So that's great. And we'll continue to build that that program over the next several years. Um, on page two, um, again, uh, down on number three is to make sure that we're separating capital and operational items, and we've done that through the, um, the district's new capital improvement fund, and and when we those expenses, I don't know how the mechanics work. Roger, but will those funds be transferred to the general budget and Correct. The expenses will be yes. paid? Um, so we wanted to put that piece of evidence in. Um, Roger and I chatted about the cash flow projection. Um, I'm on page three. Uh, there are no changes to this, but I felt it was important to keep in this year's budget as well to show you the, the, um, the revenue compared to the, um, <coughs> the change in expenditures on a month-to-month on a -month basis. You'll see some yeah. variance, and we're here to answer the questions on why that bumps around a little bit um, if you have questions in that regard. I was fascinated by that. That flow chart? Right there. Well, let's go back to that, a question that you might have, David, in a minute. Um, that brings out why we always uh, borrow money in anticipation. Mm -hmm. of that's right. Mm -hmm. That's clearly there. Yeah. Yep. It's good observation. Um, then the last page, page four, um, just a piece of evidence that, uh, you know, looking at financial impact uh, to the taxpayers of town in town, um, we put together again, I think, a fairly comprehensive annual report, a budget flyer that announced, um, you know, what the budget FY14 was um, all about. And we also had, in looking at the data, uh, nine different dates that the board met on the budget um, this past school year up until the vote on, on the 9th of April. And then finally, the numbers um, for next year for the, your policy governance under um, board investment um, and the dollars allocated for um, for your under under that policy. Sorry, Kimberly, I moved pretty quickly through that. That's all right. I'm trying to multitask. <laughs> <laughs> so some changes, not a lot um, from last year, but I guess we'll open it for questions. If questions on the board's feedback. Do you have a question about cash flow? No, I, I was just fascinated to see uh, the way that it worked out, uh, fully understanding the reason for it, but never seeing the numbers <laughs> <laughs> presented that way. Yeah, that was a good piece of evidence. I found the report informative. Thank you. Good. I have uh, two questions. Um, one is about the cash flow um, projection chart that's, dis that's shown here. Yes. Um, to make sure that I'm reading it correctly how how do we how do you internally 
come up with the estimated monthly receipts versus the estimated monthly expenses. So do you make a projection? Like at the beginning of the year, do you project what your cash flow or what your monthly expenses will be? Actually, uh, no, we, we do it differently. We look back uh, over two years to see what our actual expenses right. Have been and 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 then and then apply that to the to the new year budget, assuming a, a similar percentage right. of of expense in the uh, new year. The the revenue we can more closely tie out to you know to the dates that state payments will be made and so forth. Okay. So there's still estimates. Yes. Oh, it's definitely estimates. I'm just wondering how how am I supposed to interpret the sort of wild difference between estimated monthly expenses versus the estimated monthly receipts? Why aren't the why if they're both estimates? Why aren't they more in line with one another? Well, there, and and that of course is the is the reason that we need to to do a borrowing in anticipation of of revenue. The uh, certainly the. The uh, estimated receipts. We don't have control over the the uh, timing. In October, we get uh, our our tax proceeds, half of the, the annual taxes. In December, we we receive the the uh, large support grant from from the state. Those those dates we do not have have uh, control over the in in terms of. The estimated expenses that that you know that runs pretty continuously. The the two uh, major variables are are the number of paydays in a month. Mm -hmm. In October uh, and May, there's three paydays. Most month months are just two paydays, mm -hmm. and then uh, the majority, all but a, just a handful of our teachers, uh, request to to have their pay withheld in part each payday and then receive a, a large check in in June, which is the equivalent of, of four paydays. So that's the main reason that expenses mm -hmm. jump up so in June. And, I mentioned, down, and down in July. Right, right. I uh, mentioned uh, two main variables, number of paydays being one. The second is in November, uh, that's when we make our, our bonded debt payment. That's principal and interest in May. There's just a, a principal payment, but certainly that that skews the expense quite a bit. Other other than that, expenses run pretty continuously. So there's no need or expectation for you know a given receipt and expenses to be equal, except for the bottom line oh. total. You want those no, to be if, pretty close. Right. <laughs> Again, if we. Uh, we if we had okay. if we had control <laughs> if we had control over the timing of the receipts we wouldn't need to, okay. yeah. to borrow money right. you notice that the month with the smallest receipt in in March in in this year before we received uh, the second installment of, of property taxes from the town in April keep in mind mm -hmm. we had already borrowed two and a half <laughs> million dollars so that was in our bank account mm -hmm. our bank account, uh, was somewhat below one hundred thousand dollars before we got the second Ooh. payment <laughs> from from the town in the month of March when receipts are very very minimal. Mm -hmm. So it's you know so mm -hmm. so what you're seeing here certainly is uh, is representative of true experience this year and the recent past. That's neat. That's, that's very helpful. What month do you order supplies? Uh, for the following year, school year. Yeah, the bulk of the of of general teaching supplies are ordered late in the the school year and begin to be delivered over the summer and and fall. But but we have ordering going on, you know, well into the school year also. And when does the bill get here? In after July first. Yes, generally. Yes. I have another question. <laughs> okay. um, so one of the big factors in our budget development, or one of the things that had a huge impact on our budget development process this year was the impact of the special education audit mm -hmm. that was conducted. And I apologize for not having a copy of the last 
monitoring report for 2.4 financial planning and budgeting um, sorry 2.6 There's two policies that, that the inf information about the audit might appear. It might appear under 2.3 or 2.4. And I'm just wondering, should that information have appeared in this report? Or should it have appeared in 2.3, financial condition and activities? I think it would be more 2.3. I put it in, um, I put it under incidentals in the past. We still don't have closure right. on it. Um, but I would expect to give the board a full report as soon as I hear from Secretary Villaseca. Okay. Um, just an FYI, we went down, Roger and I and Jessica, to visit with um, his one of his attorneys um, and uh, the co-directors of special education uh, to plead our case once again. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a month ago. I right. still haven't heard. Am, but we're trying to knock that number down, which I believe is the audit now. We, we owe about $150,000. Thereabouts, we're trying to get that number down right. based on um, the last year and a half of working with the agency. Yeah, and I don't mean to in imply that you haven't kept us up to date. No, have yeah, it probably would belong in 2.3. Yeah, just okay. the financial right. condition would be my guess. But yeah, I'm just wondering at what point does that appear in the report? Yeah, it should. And it could just be a timing it issue. Definitely, it? We, yeah. And it could be related to the fact that we don't have an answer yet, too. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> we're waiting patiently. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Circling back to, to budgeting, though, the, the fact that we know there's a liability to the state was planned, as you're in aware, right. in, our, in, our, in our budget. Our it fund was. balance was appropriately affected by that need to repay that. Right. And that was for the amount of what we know right now that they're telling us we owe, yes. correct? So correct. We, aren't, we weren't assuming yes. that we were going to be paying less correct. necessarily than they had given we, us we as a bill already. A very compelling argument, so we hope that we had uh, their attention. Yeah. Right. But in yeah. the budgeting process, you gave us a number that worst was case. Worst, case worst case versus yeah. best case. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK. Any other questions or feedback on the monitoring report? I do have a question. When we get additional revenues from the state, as indicated in the very beginning of the report, for talking purposes, just pick a number, 150000 Come the next time we vote on a budget, how is that 150000 accounted for? Uh, is a prior year's budget as voted on by the public, or is it increased by 150000 to reflect that additional revenue? If, if I understand the question, we talk about carry forward? If, it, if, the, no. if the revenue no. added to our carry forward? No. Well, we got additional revenues from uh, the state. Uh, I think it was you, special. You education. mean the comparison of of one of the base year budget to the new year budget yes yes we we make those comparisons based on the budget that the voters approved, approved not the amended budget okay. that thank you actually i was also going to add to the point that that you were making if we received one hundred and fifty thousand dollars of additional revenue we have one of two options sometimes the the board is asked to approve budget amendments where you actually receive that that money as as additional formally receive it as additional revenue in the year and in, and we indicate under which codes we have plans to expend that that money so the budget the budget is increased and the planned spending is increased the other alternative is to to uh, certainly not turn the check away to receive the additional revenue mm -hmm. but not to make plans to spend the money and instead that money just rolls into fund balance which helps offset the budget a year out when we do get as shown it uh, there that we get additional revenue from the state in general is that because they're generous or because they're reimbursing us for expenses already made yeah Actually, the, we, we typically don't receive additional revenue from the, uh, from the state. The, uh, the references <coughs> made in this report were relative to federal funds, IDEA and title funds, and that, that pass through the state, but, uh, but it's uh, a reallocation 
uh, as we had previously discussed, our Title I increase this year was, was based on new census results, the 10-year census that, that showed a different level of need within our community and so forth. Um, just on the revenue chart that you gave us, the sideways PDF, <laughs> um, on that one, Roger, I just want to make sure I understand that the comparison is the original budget to what is actually spent. Correct. The ad we aren't deficit spending. We had revenue that came in that adjusted that their budget adjustments mm -hmm. that created a change in the revenue picture yeah. that allowed that to be offset. Because as you look across the bottom and you see the fact that we're running, you know, fifty-five thousand behind below. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, that is not taking into account the additional revenue. What what that fifty five thousand yeah. is is saying is compared to the revenue that we budgeted for FY thirteen, FY 13. at this point it, it we appears have overspent that revenue. No, we have not overspent. At this point it appears that that we will receive fifty five thousand seven hundred and fifty two dollars less in revenue than the okay. originally budgeted amount. But this is just revenue, this is not expenditures. Okay. We're going to get less than anticipated, but Correct. and the bud budget adjustment is for additional expenses. That 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 budget adjustment, budget or just amendments. what we were referring to when when the board amends the yes. budget to say yes, we're going to spend additional spend revenue. additional revenue. Yeah. it's not. You yeah. need to include that figure because if we if we if we uh, sh first of all show the the total plan budget, but then we show. A, a great deal of extra revenue, say a hundred, two hundred thousand, and and we'll be thinking that oh, our fund balance would automatically <laughs> grow by two hundred thousand because we received two hundred thousand more in revenue. But as as we were talking with the the federal funds, we amended the budget then to say we are going to spend that so money. So it uh, zeroes out. It 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 Largely spent, yes. is comes it, in and goes out. On the same budget category. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what? So but again, with that fifty-five thousand shown here, that compares the amended budget after planning to uh, to to spend certain additional revenue. Mm -hmm. Still, it shows that all revenue categories in in total are anticipated to yield almost fifty-six thousand dollars less than than. What the what our revenue picture otherwise would be, so while no. some revenue like like the federal funds had increased, other sources of revenue have decreased. So, am I understanding that to mean there won't be any carryover, or I know that's not the right word for it, Carry no account balance or, or fund balance? Fund balance. Yes. Oh, so there will be no fund balance. It it's not it's not telling you that. It's saying just. From the revenue side, there there is a, a deficit. Remember, yes. fund balance though is always uh, um, composed of two things: money that we haven't spent from the district mm -hmm. budget, and then excess revenue. Well, mm -hmm. if uh, if we don't have excess revenue, but a loss of revenue, then to to offset that and zero out at the end of the year, we you have know, to have underspend savings. Underspend our budget. Correct. By at least the fifty-five. Yes. So okay. the, and, and, and that. And then your projection on the purple chart was that we're going to end up with 200,000. That's FY14. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This has been a challenging spring. Yeah. For lots That's of what reasons. I was wanting yeah. to make sure I understood that. Yeah. Um, okay. At, at this point, I'm confident that we will underspend this year's budget, the expenditure side of the budget. By uh, at least fifty-seven thousand dollars, so okay. so we won't end up the total year in a deficit. In a deficit. That's, that was but, my question. But the uh, but then whatever whatever additional monies we don't spend from the bu budget would positively add to our fund balance. Okay, thank you. So um, my final question. I'm sorry. Um, oh, you've had two already. I have had two. <laughs> You have overspent your question budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
I'm trying to infer from the report about the separation of capital and operational. Mm -hmm. And um, what I want to be clear that I understand is that when you plan on tapping into the capital reserve fund, are you going to be seeking approval for the, from the board, or are you just going to be informing the board that you've accessed that fund and are using it for specific purposes? I think it would be prudent to, for me to inform the board on what the purposes of those monies would be used for, as we have here before. But as we finalize that list in the coming weeks, I think it would be appropriate for me to inform the board, but I wouldn't be seeking approval. Good. I didn't want that. Okay. I yeah, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> and I, think I don't think that I, I think that when we when we you know voted to establish and ask the community to fund it, I don't I don't think it was our intention to have that level of control or detail. Um, but informing us at a minimum, I think, is the right thing to do. And I think the, again, prudent, and you deserve to know sort of the vetting process that we've used in terms of how do we finally decide to, to do this project. And again, we will provide more detail in that regard in the ensuing. Mm -hmm weeks here. And that doesn't fall under the category of if we decide to transfer is it more than $10,000 from one area to another that we have to prove that's not. It's not a, it's not, an it's not a transfer, no. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. The only thing I would say to that point is to the extent that what you share with us provides that rationale, sort of like when you develop the budget mark, you're making the connection to the ends policies through each step of the way, through each larger budget category. We and the community, if we're going to continue to ask for their investment and support and capital improvements, want to hear the process, want to know that there's integrity with it, want to know mm -hmm. sort of the standards that are set that you're holding um, decisions to for s expenditures out of that category. Absolutely. And I think we defined when we established that account sort of capital improvements or gave some broad um, explanation to the community of what that would include. And Part of it, we'll, you'll see some, we'll always tie it to policy and what will be assets protection is an obvious one. Mm -hmm. How do you protect the assets, physical assets? Yep. Another one which you'll hear about tonight is 2.1 and 2.2 treatment of students and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and guardians and parents and staff vis-a-vis yep. -vis security. Um, and uh, so we'll do, we'll hopefully tie all of it to, to policy. That's perfect. I think yeah. that's okay. just what we need to be able to do. So if there are any further questions or comments, um, I'm happy to entertain a motion on this monitoring report. I move we accept this monitoring report on 2.4 as presented. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Uh, the monitoring report has been accepted. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Roger for coming out. Thanks, Roger. Roger. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Some, some good questions. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. Thanks. Thank you. So I can keep rolling? Yeah, that'd be great. All if right. you could continue, please. We have about a half hour left for this uh, section of the agenda. So interestingly enough, when you look at policy, executive um, limitations policy 2.1 under treatment of students and parents, guardians, and 2.2 treatment of staff. Um, <coughs> Rachel, these are policies okay. that I'm responsible for uh, monitoring and providing um, reports to the board, either incidentally or formally. Uh, so this is more of a, this discussion around school security relates to those two policies, I think. Okay. But interestingly, when you look at these policies, there's nothing about safety. And every Gallup, poll or, or comprehensive poll that I've seen in my career, the number one thing most important to our community, especially our parent community, is student safety. So I'm, it's sort of curious that these policies, neither of them have anything mentioning school or, or, or safety of people in our schoolhouses. So that might be something we want to think about in the future, or maybe not. Um, but I found that interesting. Absent of that, I still felt that this discussion on school security belongs um, nested in these two policies related to our, our teaching staff our, and our kids um, and parents. So we've all thought a lot about, about sc school security, um, um, especially since um, uh, the horrible event um, in Newtown, Connecticut back in December of 2012. And, and uh, although um, I sleep better these nights, I still it's still on my mind quite a bit as well. Um, 
because violence is all around us and we're reminded of it on a, on a regular basis. And so um, I'm here tonight just to, to share with you a recommendation and, and just would like you to consider it. And I, I guess I'm not looking for action tonight as much as is just for me to tell you where I'd like to go and unless there's um, you know, opposition to that direction, then tonight's the talk to talk about that. When I think about policy, I think it's my call um, in terms of where I want to go, but I, I think it would be prudent again to engage the board in the discussion and have your support um, before I go any further. I, even though there's no there's no rule book here and help me think about whose decision is this, um, but I hope that I have your support in moving in, in this direction. Um, so as I said, school uh, safety, the safety of our children, the safety of staff is, is the most important thing in the minds of, of, our, of our community. Um, and although I haven't done any formal um, survey of, of the parent community or student community or staff community, I can tell you anecdotally that um, well over, um, I would say, the majority of people who have weighed in feel that we've got to um, improve our security in our th three schools. Um, and so I've thought about that a lot over the last months, um, and um, I have a recommendation that I wanted to provide you. Um, the first is to is to continue to do our best in practicing um, good safety drills. Um, that really is tantamount um, to the safety of the kids and the staff who are in our building every day. And, and research has proven that if our kids and our staff are well prepared to respond to a threat or the act of an act of violence, the more practiced we are, the, the safer people will be. Um, and so it's really, really important to continue to be vigilant in practicing those drills on a monthly basis um, and having the support of our community vis-a-vis -vis through the School of Public Safety Committee has just been a real asset to our continued effort in, in being on top of our game at all times. We're also going to continue the procedures of checking all volunteer, all um, guests into the schoolhouse, all three schools now, um, um, ask for the car keys if there are any that need to be dropped off, if people are here even to visit for a moment, and those guests will need to require, will require them to continue to um, have a, a visitor's pass. So those three features as well, car keys, checking in, name plates um, or name tags are all in place in all three of our schools. Do I assume that there's alternatives to that cocky thing? To the what? Is there alternative to that cocky thing? Because 99% of the time when I take the key out of the switch, I put it in the center console. I shouldn't say this on... <laughs> <laughs> You're not TV. You <laughs> <laughs> <It's laughs> a green truck. So I don't even have cockies when I go into the school. <laughs> Well, <laughs> your wallet will be fine, no, David. They don't mind. Leave your wallet. <laughs> I feel that uh, in most instances, uh, it's just a, it's another safety feature of, of, of our <laughs> overall program to ask that the keys be delivered. And it's been greeted, I think, maybe not favorably among some, all folks, but I think it's, a, it's another reassuring feature of what we're asking folks to do. And I think most people get that, even though it is sometimes inconvenient or some people might at times leave their, their keys in their cars. I think there are, there's, we, have, we have flexibility. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So those those items will remain in place. Um, what I'm recommending to to the board is the following. Uh, in addition to those um, those items that are in place, um, one is to um, starting this next school year is to lock the front door of all buildings, um, the inner the inner door, um, the inside lobby door. So you get to go you go through the the exterior door and then the next door is locked. Um, that the, all those three doors have a buzzer system uh, that is activated by personnel in the office. Um, they will also, we're also researching the fortification of those um, entrances with fortified door frames and glass um, uh, in the event, um, again, of a violent act, um, so with some of the weapon that we slow that person down with more fortified material um, in the door and the glass. Um, that the buzzer be activated um, and that we also can we also have um, exterior cameras. At this point, we're just ex exterior cameras that are mounted in the front of every bar um, building so we can pan the, the entrance of people coming out of the parking lot, people walking up the sidewalk, so we know who's coming. And right now, we don't have that type of sighting available. Um, so that would be another um, piece of that. We're also considering, um, we've had some discussions as recently as today, of there are some blind spots in all three of our schoolhouses where um, we don't have any way to see who's, if there's anybody who might be outside of the building in, in some areas. Uh, so, you know, the possibility of uh, mounting an, another exterior camera so we can see all parts of the building, either visually through windows or um, through, through a camera that's mounted ex exterior side of the building. Um, 
Uh, and lastly, um, is um, to really think, be thoughtful about what staff training looks like. Um, we are, with a, a locking system and a buzzer system, going to be relying on our front office staff to make decisions. Um, and in talking with uh, Essex Police, um, you know, we de I definitely need to have a, um, uh, a comprehensive sort of orientation and ongoing support to front office staff on how to make those decisions in the event that we have questions on, uh, on, the, um, on the persons visiting the schoolhouse. So don't take this casually. There, there's, a, there's a, a training component here that needs to be in place so that we have people prepared to make good decisions. Um, one of the good things is that in talking to Chief LaRose uh, in the Public School Safety Committee uh, two weeks ago, uh, we've had a two-year a two -year period when there's only been one school resource officer, an SRO. Um, and after a two-year hiatus, they're bringing back that second position. Um, so there'll be two SROs um, um, who will be serving both the ADL and the and and this this not just EMS but the district. Um, so there will be not police in our buildings every day, but more of a I, th I think more of a police presence. Um, that uh, if you talk to the folks at the middle school, having a police officer's car parked in front of the building. <laughs> Um, is just a, a powerful symbol that uh, we've got uh, qualified and capable law enforcement people um, on the premises and to spread that resource a little bit more equitably across our two buildings. Um, not as a, you know, going to get you sort of cop guy, but uh, someone who's just there to be able to say good morning to parents and children and to, you know, walk in our halls and say hello to teachers and, and whatnot. So that's another, another benefit that we'll, we'll see next year that's been on hiatus again for two years. I'm um, sorry, Mike, do we have one that's shared with ADL right now? So the two middle schools share one. Yeah. So there'll be two then shared among two. our whole district yeah, and then just ADL. ADL. Okay. So one of the positions, Kim, is, is, um, is really a teaching position. Uh, yep. And it works, works you know, exclusively with Mary Viglotti and yep. Family Health and Consumer Sciences. And one of the, I believe it's a that's a curriculum issue. Mm -hmm. um, and when we have resources like a, a SRO working, um, meeting, helping kids meet curriculum standards, I think we should always be evaluating whether or not that's a resource that still is, is meeting, meeting the needs that are outlined in our curriculum. And it very well may be, but it's time to take a look at um, pretty much the service that they're providing in that curriculum and, and the results that we're getting. Mm -hmm. So to be more a little bit more data oriented around mm -hmm. that resource. Um, don't get me wrong, I mean, it's an incredible resource for our kids, but I think we should always be evaluating other other ways that we can use such a, a finite amount of time of experts. Mm -hmm. um, so on the table tonight, again, is a, um, certainly something new to think about. Um, um, again, I've thought long and hard about it. I, I, I believe I've got um, at least the people who have taken the interest in and um, giving me a call or stopping it or sending an email that there's clearly, knowing that it's not going to prevent violence, yeah. but it certainly will delay it. Um, and that's what people are looking for, a little bit more assurance. And I believe, and even the police will tell you that, in fact, it does give you a little bit more time um, mm -hmm. in the event of a, um, someone who's at the, at the door who we don't want in the building. Who have you consulted with to come up with this strategy? Um, obviously, you mentioned the, our, our local school community, or not community, our School safety committee. And I haven't brought this to them. These are the okay. first ones to hear it. Okay. But, yeah. okay. I haven't consulted. I've looked at. Uh, we're we're one of the few schools that remain that don't lock our doors. I can mm -hmm. tell you that most schools you know, lock their doors. Um, mm -hmm. We don't. Um, uh, Chittenden Central, they do not lock their doors, but they have ex they have many many cameras um, situated on their campuses. Um, buzzer systems are customary. Um, what I don't have a lot of research on is what that training, comp I, I offered some training two years ago mm -hmm. to, to our front half of staff, um, but I'm thinking something, something we need something different um, now for it to go this mm -hmm. route. So the norm is schools are locked. Um, I think uh, it's, it's not uncommon. In fact, I think it is the norm. Um, but these other things are, are fairly pretty common. Mark? Oh, good. I was just going to say, has there been any look at, you know, so I'm assuming they're locked, it's probably going to be like that 8.30 or whatever to 2.30, any look at safety the within the school, end of the beginning of the day, end of the day, after school hours when there's other school activities on, I mean, everything's kind of open and yeah. free, yeah. has there been any look at those? Yeah. The EMS is the only school that closed, locks their door at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about that as well as we still have, especially at the elementary school, teachers can still access any, their classrooms. So this, I, I'm at the position of 
again, not to get into a great deal tonight, but I, I don't believe that we should be allowing people to get into the building unless through the front door. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that our, our door should be locked. All exterior doors should be locked, and, and, and that's a piece. That's we've got. To, we need to move in that mm -hmm. direction. But closing the schoolhouse down at a certain time um, needs to be a standard across the district. And right now, we're not consistent there. It's got to be challenging on the days though. You've got Cub Scouts, PTA. Mm -hmm. you know. it, presents, it will present some yeah. challenges. The most important time is when you've yeah. got your majority of people, right. of 600 people in the schoolhouse. That's yeah. the biggest concern right there. Yeah. Mark, I haven't. Um, I remember, you know, years ago um, when we first instituted sort of a new wave of security measures. There was a. I think there was a little bit of a delay in making sure that every classroom had a lock that every classroom had shades that could be drawn. Are all those basic safety features now in place in every classroom? Yeah, and all, all classrooms can call out 911. Okay. We have, Neil is Macintosh. Uh, I've, his job description has changed slightly, <coughs> well, more than slightly in some cases, but because uh, I want him to take on more of a district perspective and he is our, I want him to be our school security go-to person, so he, uh, regularly checks the mechanics of doors, magnetized doors, shades. Teachers have a responsibility to report to us if, if pull down a sleeve, a sleeve and the thing falls apart, then we need to replace that. So we have so many classrooms, people have to be, you know, vigilant in reporting the nail, but that's, those are priorities to keep mm -hmm. well maintained at all times. Right. Um, our keying system, uh, somewhat antiquated, uh, so we're moving, trying to move to a more standardized key um, system. For instance, this weekend, got many, many alarm calls at EMS. We had an, an electrical problem um, in, in, uh, in the town this past weekend. And again, thanks to Neil for coming in here at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and trying to get the coolers to come back up. I mean, it was a real disaster, not at our end, but the utility end. But we're getting calls because there's not everyone has their own security number at EMS, so they're all exchanging numbers and some people it's just it's not it's not tight. So these are systems that we need to improve upon, and you know, it's a work in progress. But the the basic stuff yeah. sorts of things, Brendan, we're we're right on top of okay, that. Okay, good. I believe. Um, one of the other um, suggestions from the community, from specific members of the community, was a request that we consider actually having guards in every single school building. Yeah, and that's not the recommendation you're bringing to us tonight. Not at I all. wonder if you could explain. Why that's not the recommendation? That would that would be out of the norm. Um, the, there's been only one um, set of parents who have been strong advocates that that's something that I would consider that we have a positioned police officer. Um, I don't think the word armed was used, but a police officer who's at the door guarding. Um, I just think that sends the wrong message. I, I don't think that that's a, a community-oriented um, environment for, for our youth and for families to be greeted by an, an armed officer. Um, I don't think that uh, it, it warrants that level of intervention, um, trying to keep the, you know, what we hope our schools are for our, our, our community, that having armed police officers that is the antithesis of that, I believe. Um, I also don't believe there's, and I haven't looked at the research, but the police will tell you that's probably not a good idea either. Um, um, if someone is bad's going to come in, they're going to come in, and regardless of who you have out standing out in front of the, of the doorway. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I don't know of, other than the NRA, I'm not sure how many people are advocating for that um, you know, here in this community. Two questions. Have you considered a slide card system for the primary entrance doors? It's come up as a possibility. Um, the elementary school, I think, would be a problem because there are so many doors. Yeah, but if we shut down all exterior doors mm -hmm. and just allow front door entrance, it would be less of a problem. But the doors would still be fire exits. That's correct. Yeah. The technology is there. You know, how far do we want to go? Um, I've participated in a couple of webinars that, that look at schools, especially in the more densely urban areas where there are, there are those, those types of um, systems. I, w I had a meeting over the Department of Children and Families uh, two weeks ago, and over in Williston, and they're all coded with their security cards. It's pretty slick, um, but I've also, this webinar also shows that people can get in right behind the person who has the card. Right. I mean, there's all sorts of, sure. it's not fail safe. Right. Um, you know, Roger and I, Roger's still here, I chatted a little bit about maybe moving in that direction when the technology gets a little bit more, less cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the security of who, you, know, you lose your card, you, first you lose your key. 
Mm -hmm. You know, it, those things have to. But it's easy to program somebody out of the building if they have a car. It is. You ready for my second question? Mm -hmm. I don't have a good answer for that first one, but I mean, it's come up in the conversation. But it came up, so that, that this isn't part. It's not part of this. Tonight on the news, and you mentioned it, nine one one. If someone from the elementary school calls 911, does that call go through the central office of the middle school? So uh, is this school district in compliance with 911 that yes. everything triggers to the location? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, I believe we got a memo from the Secretary of Education. Yes, we had to complete a, a, a survey, survey a week or two ago, and, and that was the purpose of the question on the survey and we verified that with our technology staff. That so Mark, what are the estimated costs for instituting these security measures? Yeah, we haven't spec that out. We, we've, we're not even, we're not, it would be premature to go out to bid. We do have uh, prospective contractors who are, are specking that out for us. You know, we, we um, targeted 40K in the budget. That was I think I just came up with it. it sounded like a good number. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't have any idea. The technology is not anything innovative. It's pretty common stuff. Um, the, what gets expensive is when you start um, looking at the integrity of door frames and, and glasses. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that would be you get into some case. dollars there. Yeah. Um, architecturally, there's no big change here. We can use the current infrastructure, but again, we get into replacing door frames and whatnot. But mm -hmm. um, I would come back with a again with more information when, they, when that was specked out, but the target would be um, in place by the August by August 29th. Okay. One thing I would just really encourage you uh, to think about because you've done a great job up to this point with it is communication with uh, especially the parent community about mm -hmm. any safety measures that are taken. Mm -hmm. um, you did such a, a great job in sort of responding and talking mm -hmm. to parents through that very difficult time that brought back a lot of memories for this mm -hmm. district. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great to just make sure that you're, as you're instituting or implementing these security measures, that you're communicating, over-communicating with parents about when, what, why, mm -hmm. and how. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And with the anticipation that the implementation would be August 29th, if we have enough information to be able to share with the community the plans for these security improvements to be in place when they come back to school, mm -hmm. I think that would be terrific to mm -hmm. be able to um, inform people before they leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would like to. I, I would like to think we can get a correspond. I mean, my plan was to get, depending on your your position, is to put something out to the parent community and staff community and students by the end of this school year, mm -hmm. um, without a lot of detail, but just to reassure them that we've not lost sight of of this very right. important right. topic. And it isn't about school, it's not about student safety. You know, I've really tried to change up the vernacular, it's about school security because there's no guarantee that locking the door is gonna make kids more safe. So right. it really is about the security of the building, but to put out that, um, you know, that sort of that concept to, um, without saying I'm thinking about it, but this is what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, without any a lot of great yeah. detail. And I think, Mark, to the extent you find in gathering the, um, estimates or whatever they're called when they <coughs> bids, um, you find that this plan is doable within a range of what you had expected. Um, I don't think you'd have to wait till the last week necessarily. I think even highlighting the things that um, the taking keys in all three buildings having the same mm -hmm. rules is sort of a reminder that this hasn't fallen off your radar mm -hmm. and that um, this is where we are in the planning and this mm -hmm. is what we expect will be in place by August 29th. Mm -hmm. This is what's happened since my last communication mm -hmm. with you on this. Uh, again, only because as the school year winds down, people become very busy and distracted mm -hmm. with a lot of things and this is a pretty important yeah, follow-up yeah. and message yeah. um, and it highlights the commitment you've had to this mm -hmm. and I think um, people knowing that they should expect some changes coming up in the fall and, and we'll be communicating with you on details and logistics around mm -hmm. that later. But and it's also a good time to remind uh, folks that things have already been implemented. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Changes have already, you know, if you haven't been into a school building in a while, you yeah. don't know that things have mm -hmm. changed already. So, Or if you've only known one building and that happens to be the version that is now happening all over, right. um, 
you know, especially as people are transitioning from building to building. Yeah, I just remember that that sort of list of things that I think what your second communication detailed. I mean, mm-hmm. that was so comprehensive and it showed the range of, of response. I don't think you need to repeat all of it, but I think um, as part of your ongoing communication to remind people of what's happened already, mm-hmm. and then these are the things that are, you're going to find when you come back in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Might mm-hmm. be a good way to communicate. Thanks. I think that's a, that's a good recommendation. I believe that it will be, there'll be a percentage of people who feel it's it's overreacting. There's some people who may just be kind of nonchalant, but I, again, my anecdotally, I can tell you that I think that the response is going to be thank you. you know, I think that that's a, a good decision. There's going to be some people who say you're underreacting. And you figure if you got a few who think you're overreacting, if you think you're underreacting, you're probably doing it about right. <laughs> you know, yeah. if, you're, if no one were thinking you were overreacting, yeah. then maybe you're not reacting enough. Yeah. And we just hope that obviously that no one's touched by it again, but we know that that's the reality is it's going to happen right. somewhere. Right. Right. So I think the things that you've uh, detailed in your in your plan to us tonight are uh, prudent and they're not over overkill in, in I think in my estimation and it just seems like conventional wisdom it, it seems like it would these things would be generally welcomed by the parent community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not that hard to do. They're not terribly obtrusive and I think that as I think that devil may be in the details of, you know, does it make sense to do it before everybody's in the building? Probably not. But once everybody's in the building, definitely. And what, if, yeah. what do you do about letting people in for board meetings and, and <laughs> Boy Scouts? But your rationale, that notion that at that point in the evening, there are only so many people. And so maybe the cameras are then your check on that, that nobody's, yeah. maybe there's procedures that say, okay, somebody's always checking the camera for the times when it's open or something, yeah. because then nobody's hanging out in the building or whatever. I don't know, but we do. We are a resource to the community, so finding the right balance right. Yeah. will be the challenge That's in the right. logistics. Um, but I can't imagine a parent with a student in a building not welcoming the more secure um, opportunity yeah. for those parts of the day where there's less coming and going. And you know, I, it doesn't seem like a problem to yeah, our buildings. Fortunately, anyway. uh, we've got their their physically challenged in some ways, mm-hmm. but I think we're lucky that we've got, even though it's pre-Columbine design, it's still, you know, I think there's, with some just more vigilant, I think, on an office staff, we'll just have to reorient around mm-hmm. around this this stuff, uh, that we have good sighting capability. You know, we, yeah. I've worked in buildings where, you know, the, the buzzer rang and the person was in the back of the building went in their way to the hallway to let the UPS yeah. guy in. I mean, yeah. there's, I don't think we'll have the annoyance factor, won't be as great here, right. um, but it will there'll be some of that. Will the security procedures change at the central office as well as the school office? You know, we haven't brought that up. Um, central office is aware of these recommendations. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we haven't, uh, we should be concerned, but we're not as concerned as, as what we are yeah. here in the school building. Just trying to think of all of the yeah. facilities that we have. I guess there's a package price to keep you guys safe, too. <laughs> 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 That's right. You may be the biggest fan. Do you need anything from us tonight? No, just I just what I'm hearing is um, that you're Mm -hmm. uh, you might have individual views on it, but I think what I'm hearing by not hearing it that you're in support of me taking Mm -hmm. these these steps. Sounds like there's consensus. Yeah, I think it's being sure. Yeah, I I like the idea of support, bringing in info from other districts. What are other districts doing? What the police recommend? Those sorts of things. I just have one quick question. Do your student resource Yes, they are. Mark, my question of navy blue. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, Mark, my question about the (laughs) SROs is: Do we have any influence over what their schedule looks like in terms of when they come to the school? Yeah. Yeah. I just wonder if if a recess time is a good time for them to be on the premises. Brad and I had a Brad Chief LaRose and I, and then the the very very sad incident with with Rosie um, Mm Hallowell passing away. we had to cancel our meeting, but um, those are the sorts of things I was going to explore with okay. Brad. You know, our uh, Kurt McGuinness, um, Corporal McGuinness, is just mm-hmm. fabulous, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, they're they've got real they've got jobs <coughs> out there, and so. Yeah. But what Kurt's been able to do is, you know, um, he's been he's, he's been very flexible in meeting our needs. Uh, when he works with Mary Viglotti, you know, he <laughs> class starts at ten o'clock, <laughs> and you've got to be there. I mean, sort of thing. So, but he's they've yeah. been just unbelievably great. Because it seems to me that that's the time that's the time of day where there's you know it's it's a harder security yeah. <laughs> issue yeah. uh, to deal with when kids are out on the on the playground. Yeah. Well, which school does he go to? 
Yeah. He's in all three buildings, but what we're hoping to shape is through a three distribution of time is just being, you know, more just sort of visible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, sort right. of the friendly police officer on the corner type of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're police officers, they're busy, you know, yeah. protecting the community, mm -hmm. but they're, they're really good about being flexible. Great. Any other questions, comments? Just if they're going to be hanging around like the elementary school. I'm thinking as a middle school parent, I don't balk at seeing a police car sitting in the front or at the high school, frankly, just knowing they're part of what happens. I didn't when my first kid yeah. hit the middle school, so I was a little worried the first time I saw it. But I don't <laughs> balk at it now, and I would think in that communication, yeah. Mark, having families understand their role in sharing their time in all the buildings would help families not okay. be terribly alarmed if they're going yeah. to volunteer at the elementary school yeah. and they pull up next question. to the cop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Brendan okay. mentioned recess. <coughs> Would the uh, exterior cameras be pointed towards the recess area? I haven't specced that out yet, but if, uh, again, it's not so much the... Recess is a fun time. You know, you should check out recess. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see the video. You want to be there in person. I would be yeah. afraid to pack my vehicle. You have to eat lunch with them first, too. <laughs> uh, we have, and again, part of our discussion with prospective vendors is to look at sort of those spots that are, are more, you know, less more Vulnerable. secure risk. And, and recess, the recess grounds, mm -hmm. recess grounds might be one of those places. Yeah. But, you know, mm -hmm. I look forward to hearing yeah. more about that. Okay. But then do you do the athletic fields, too? I wasn't going to go that far. Yeah. Should you? I was going to put one in Roger's office, you know, see what he's doing. <laughs> 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 what is he doing? Do all the <laughs> <laughs> Roger says he wanted to right. put in the budget one for your office. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Again, too many cameras is too much. We also yeah. want to be just aware of it's a <laughs> yeah. community schools and to be careful about that. So we have just five minutes left of our allotted time. Um, and I know, well, not quite, but... Um, one of the things that we wanted to get to before the executive session was um, item number seven. So, um, and unfortunately, I don't have the annual calendar in front of me, so I'm not sure what uh, is on the docket for our next meeting. But I will definitely follow up on that uh, and, let, and let folks know if there's a long-term report due for the next meeting, uh, which is going to be taking place on May 13th. So um, I'll follow up on that. But I wanted to get back to uh, Dan's question about future agenda items. And so mm -hmm. maybe you could just give a very quick uh, overview of, of what you're thinking about and wh whether or not the board thinks that that might be something we want to consider. Yeah, well, two things. One super quick. Uh, this wasn't what, what I was originally thinking of, but a comment about the music program came up at some point, and it dawned on me again. Did oh. we ever – did we ever – Right, so sorry about that. that. Yeah, so the follow-up there is um, I did speak again with Tom, who mm -hmm. was representing the boosters that mm -hmm. evening, and um, – we, we spoke on and off. I asked him to give me some time for, for us to focus on the budget and getting the budget passed. Uh, and after a conversation with Mark, we decided that the best course of action would be for Tom and uh, a group of folks um, to interact directly with Mark and Kevin, perhaps, on a dialogue mm -hmm. about okay. what's actually happening uh, to make sure that we're all operating with the same information in terms of you know what's mm -hmm. actually occurring on the ground and then to have a chance to communicate concerns and, and address or respond to concerns that, that folks might have. So uh, I basically passed it on to Mark to schedule an opportunity to get together with those folks. And I don't know if you've had a chance to. I just them. spoke to Kevin today because of the invitation. He and I, Kevin and I and Tom will meet together. Okay. So. Great. Can Great. I just wanted to see if there was some. Yeah, I'm sorry for not no, that's up on that. Would it make sense since we had several emails addressed? I think I don't think I got any individual one that we didn't all get yeah. that a brief response to all of those to indicate what the current plan is may make sense so that people know that there is something happening on it? Um, perhaps. Um, most of those emails were generated um, as part of sort of a plan campaign yeah, so I'm assuming by the boosters. So I sort of made the assumption that Tom would circle back with those folks to let them know what the plan was. Yeah. But the emails came to us, they did. and so yeah. being completely unresponsive doesn't feel ideal to me. Right. As um, so, what I'm happy to do uh, is collect, go back and and, if we and just review. If looked at all those and, right. and just provided one blanket response to indicate that, as you may already be aware, your 
I don't recall the gentleman's name, your representative, um, will uh, be in contact yeah. with our superintendent. So I'm happy to, I'm happy to, right. So what I'll do is I will go back to those messages, collect all the different emails, yeah. and then CC all of you on my response. That, if that's you know, okay, Brennan, that would be great. I think that, if that, does that sound okay to you, Mark? Sure. Just, Just so that there's a know. response because we were yep. sent. They took the time to contact us and yeah. we should let them know what the plan okay. the plan is and such so you just keep them in the loop. In the May meeting, um, on May 13th we have 4.2 and 4.5 due. And it so looks like 2.1 and 2.2. 4.2 is job uh, board job description with him. 4.5. Board members code of conduct. So those would be very helpful. We want to know how you think you get to do it. You get to do it now. You get to do them both. That's exactly why we. I think we're done being able to attend them. Yes, I think that is why we. So, well, the the piece that I'm wondering that that I'm interested in putting on, or do you want to assign four point two and four point five before I blab on? Um. Thanks. Um. Four point two and four point. Um, I'm happy to take 4.5 if somebody can take 4.2. What was 4.2 again? 4.2 uh, is the job description. This is where I get to learn what that even means. Yeah, um. so we're looking at the, so we have so to monitor ourselves for the okay. 3.0s and the 4.0s. Okay. Okay. So and so we have to look at the policy and we do it in a chart format. We're not quite as thorough as <laughs> Mark, um, but it has become a manageable way of monitoring our work. And um, I'm just looking, Brendan, to see who did 4.2 last because we so, are trying okay, to so have I've a different a voice. Okay, so i copy on. of this here. Right, so that's so the, that might be the last. So last time, time we did it May, I did do it last time. I don't, I think if we didn't do it more recently than last May, I was the last one to do it. But I will do it again if nobody else wants it. So is this like a monitoring document that's already developed that you just okay. reuse each time? We tend to use okay. that as a starting point. Okay. And the person who is assigned to it might make some you know, changes yeah. or flourishes to it. So, okay. like I said, I did it last time, but I am happy to do it again. So. Okay, if you could, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm 4.2. I'll do 4.5, and Kim's going to do 4.2. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. Cool. Yeah. So, the, the what what I where this comes from was you know at our, at our was it really our last meeting that we had that wasn't the budget presentation? It seems like it was a long time ago. But um, you know when when we had the presentation on it was if I recall it was really focused on the, uh, the more challenged kids with literacy and 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 math. And I remember at the end thinking, geez, was this data really even? Uh, I don't want to say valid, but was it? It was. It was subjective. It was this, the um, report card data, and it feel it, it feels like that's been an issue. Not report card data, but the the literacy issue, the reading issue for particularly those kids, the social economic disadvantaged, uh, the title ones. Um, that's consistently been an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you've identified if, if there's any one spot that, that we seem to be, how the heck do we make this better? That's the one that's been challenging us for a while. So I feel like it, it makes sense to step back and say, well, what, what else can we look at? What other data can we look at? And so I was kind of struggling a bit trying to figure out, well, how do I even ask that question? And that's why I got the, went and got the read report from Mark and kind of looked it over again, I, which I think the title of the report is very ironic. Um, the read report, <laughs> but, um, and try to figure out what can we look at, what 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 can we look at in there um, to see improvement and see lack of improvement and figure out is there anything we can do. And what I found, well, I was really glad I went back to the read report. Is they talk about really looking at not literally see as a global thing, but okay, that you can break it down. And math, you can break it down. And they talk about you know the, the big five of literacy, the big five of of, uh, of math, and and you know specifically 
stating, you know, how it's very measurable, measurable outcomes. This is a, straight out of the Reed report on, on these different big five things. And so my thought is, are we monitoring those? We must be monitoring those five. We're teaching those five things. We're monitoring those five things throughout all different ages. Is that something we can look at and gather mm -hmm. that data? And so is that something we can say, Mark, bring us the data on, on those different categories of the phonics, phonetical, phonetic awareness? Is that, I'm not even saying it right, phonics and vocabulary, the five different things that are, you know, that are listed as the, the primary pieces, and then say, okay, either we have that data or we don't. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have that data, why don't we have that data? If we do have that data, how is that data being used? Um, and that, that would be much more useful to me than as much as you know, the presentation that we had six weeks ago or whenever it was, was good in as, as far as it went. But I feel like if that's been an issue for us for so long, is it time to step back to you know, bore down a little deeper into that data mm -hmm. and, and see what we're missing there? So that's so, so, I, so I guess what I'm trying to understand from a board perspective, what, what are you advocating for more evidence in the monitoring of that report? Are you asking for, um, I'm just trying to figure yeah, out how well, to respond well, as, a, as a board to right. your as, as, a, as a PG board, I feel like that's all we can ask for, mm -hmm. more evidence. Right. We can't say, go do something different. We can say, okay, let's get a little more detail about what, what are we doing, what, what are the results? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's, that's what we're able to do is to try to shed some light on um, are we sufficiently monitoring and then using that data um, to improve the, those reading conditions, literacy conditions for that group of, of students that are, are, as you, to use your language, so tangled up in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I, I've heard enough from different parents, not a lot, but from some parents, some teachers, that there isn't that consistency. We don't have good uh, follow through from grade to grade to grade to grade to grade. Mm -hmm. I said, well, why not? Shouldn't, aren't we, are we monitoring those kids as they go along so that we're not trying to catch up at some point or we, you know, and, and having that consistent flow of gathering the data, utilizing it. And the, the neat thing, fortunately, the neat thing is those, as Mark or, uh, Rich Reed calls them, the big five, fit the common core very mm -hmm. perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so say, like, well, if we're gonna start looking at common core, it almost flows naturally that we're gonna wanna start looking at those five things. And so that's what I say. I, I don't know who would be the best to bring it. Are, are you the best to bring us that information, or would that be, should we go to Libby or, or Ellen, or do we go to um, Peter and, and Kevin and, and, and uh, um, Karen? I mean, who, who presents that data the best? Who analyzes it the best? So I, I don't even well, know. Well, you know, given the hour uh, uh, <laughs> and just not being prepared to. Oh, no, no, I don't that. expect so, you to say anything um, now. One of the things I would just, what we have, the board should continue to think about is how do you give me feedback? after report comes in and that's right. what that form is for. And right. least what you saw six weeks ago was not six weeks ago was not a monitor report. Yeah. Okay. Right. It was something new we were doing this year and just giving you a sort of a sh uh, you know a glance right. a set of data that's that data um, I started the presentation by saying this isn't the greatest data but it the end sizes are so small. Right. Mm -hmm. With kids with disabilities in each grade level um, and kids with who are in poverty that those data are not statistically relevant in a board report. Right. Do teachers monitor those kids on a daily basis? Absolutely. Are they looking at the grain size that Rich talks about in his report? Absolutely, in terms of following those kids' progress. I don't believe that that's important, that's good data for the board to look at because those are individual student data. Um, right. so, so how do you take that data as a cohort and show it in a way that's statistically re relevant is, is, is a challenge at times. So, at least at this shot out of the gate, grade reports, grade report card grades made sense to me, knowing mm -hmm. that there's some sub subjectivity. Mm -hmm. I've identified the last couple of years that we don't have common assessments um, across the district. Um, right. And so when I look at trying to mine data to show the board, 
what I have in one building is going to look different in another building. So um, I do believe that that's the work that's in front of us that we need, that you keep hearing me say that we need to have that uh, better in place in the future. And I do believe, as you mentioned, the Common Core might, might help us there. But more importantly, it's, it's making sure that we've got vertical groups working across grade levels who are agreeing as a group what's the best data to be looking at to determine whether or not these cohorts of kids, um, which is different per grade, um, how those kids are performing. And I can tell you that we are looking at those on a regular basis with teachers are. I'm not, but teachers are. Yeah, I think what's hard for the board sometimes is because we, we get some of these bigger monitoring reports once or twice during the year, mm -hmm. and then we get some great sort of like, here's some latest and greatest information. Sometimes it's hard for us to patch it all together and to look at it as a whole. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what, what I'm hearing anyway is that when we get to maybe the either the next update or the next full monitoring report about some of the outcomes, that we, all of us, talk more sort of substantively about what's the data, is, it th is this the right data, is there more data to be had, because that seems to be your sort of interest is data. Yeah, well, um, I, well. So I think that, you know, as we move forward, and, and you know, I was glad that you reminded us that it wasn't actually in the context of a full monitoring report, mm -hmm. um, I think that we can just keep asking for what is the right evidence and are we getting the right information. And I think, um, uh, like, I the indicators continue to be the thing that we're trying to refine. What are the right indicators for all of, all right. of this? And I wouldn't want us <coughs> to not get the data that's going to show up in the paper because all the standardized tests, those results, when they become available, sure. we want them as soon as you have them because we're going to read about them. Um, sometimes good, bad, or otherwise, they're, they're likely to be in the free press. And um, I think I've appreciated you being coming to us with that in advance of the fuller, the, the more complete report that we'll get in the fall. Um, but I, I definitely could see where maybe, where, especially this year, where um, the third grade is um, now. It's not just the poverty or the the um, title winner, the kids on IAP. Um, that bigger group didn't see the progress that they should have. Um, any different way that helps inform us on h sometimes even on how you're looking at the data because that we all know that that big kneecap isn't telling the whole story mm -hmm. um, in the same way again that you sort of provide us the budget with the backdrop of how this helps to this money is necessary to meet the ends for students this is the data we see coming out of the standardized tests and these are the other ways we're looking at it because we know we need to be looking at these in smaller grains. That helps inform, I think, our understanding of your approach to getting in compliance, which you've done well in these reports where you acknowledge not being in compliance. You provide us a plan for how you're going to come into compliance. And so maybe you guys are doing a lot other than just looking at the kneecap data. And you take for granted that we may understand mm -hmm. that that's happening in the background. But I think the more often we see things either not in compliance with the, or a pattern of stuff, even if it's a small end, you're right, we definitely can't be looking at each student. We can't even get more demographic information in the context of a public meeting. And, and it's not fair to students. Yeah. I but think I think a, I understanding think your process yeah. is beneficial to understanding the efforts that are going towards helping these kids. I think it's a very small percentage of kids who are not learning, who are not growing in the district. Right. And if you talk to any parent who's a, ch a parent of children who are at risk, I think they're going to tell you that the teachers who work here uh, are doing a fabulous yeah. job helping their kids um, learn. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, do they perform well on statewide assessments? Uh, no, yeah. not necessarily. But the, the growth curve is a positive one, I can yeah. tell you that. And, oh. and decisions around instruction are happening daily based on the result, that based on the right. data that teachers generate. So I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to continue to think about how do I put this out to the board that makes sense to you. So right. it peppered in these monitoring reports is a little bit of means discussion, like how we how we trying to get there, yeah. recognizing that the gap still exists um, and it's not acceptable, but that it's. Mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah, see that that's I I, I feel mm. like you know and, and this, again straight out of the read report I've, I've got a few few of these pages printed out here which is why I keep throwing this thing around. Mm. Um, you know the idea that by eighth grade they're kicking butt, even by sixth grade they're kicking butt, in third grade they suck. Mm -hmm. Overstatement. Mm -hmm. um, in third grade they're weak. Why are they weak in third grade and great in fifth grade? It, shouldn't that slope be something like this? not mm. like this. Yeah. Or maybe we'll see th things differently and maybe part of understanding will, maybe it'll be illuminated in seeing an increase in preschool, but, you know, quality right. of preschool instruction. I think a different look at that standardized data that we know is a snapshot, mm -hmm. is I think could be very valuable in mm. helping understand the backdrop for a lot of the work that's happening. The, the focus on preschool education, the focus on um, professional learning communities. It, it may be what helps pull that picture of all the strategic work that's happening, Mark, together. And I think while that's reporting on the means, it's also providing depth and a picture that's better than a snapshot of a NECAP result. It's also all those, and it's about instruction, good instruction, yeah. and uh, you know, professional development. The board invests over a quarter of a million dollars every year in the professional right. development of teachers, uh, and that work's really, really important. And uh, we know what works in schools around instruction. We know that what doesn't work, and so we're still in the process of having those discussions at the table by looking mm -hmm. at student results. What's working in one classroom? If it's working in one classroom, then should we be, or in one school, should we be thinking about those practices in another schools? And uh, it is unacceptable that we send seven-year-olds over to have founders as third graders and we see a dip. Why is that? Well, we, we think we know in some cases. In other ways, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. Do you have a lot of data? Like, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, the whole preschool, that, that whole pre-K kindergarten entering that you compare, because, I mean, do we know how big that dip is? I mean, or is there a dip? And we, are we starting up? Here and we're still seeing a substantial increase. I don't know. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not totally familiar with the data. It'll create a but picture at least that's is broader, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, the purpose of tonight's conversation wasn't necessarily to get into this yeah. <laughs> issue, but it was to just address the issue of how do we, um, how do we let Mark know, and when do we let Mark know about what data might be useful and helpful to fully understand, an, uh, you know, a particular issue, yeah. and. Um, and so I think you brought up some great points, and maybe as we look forward to the next update or the next monitoring report, those are some of the considerations that you can be thinking of as you, as you put the report together, and those are some of the questions we can bring to the table for that monitoring report. Yeah, yeah. When, when would that next monitoring report be that monitors, that looks at what well, that would be appropriate? Um, I think it might be early June. Yep. Right, 1.2, yeah. 1.4 and 1.1 subgroups. So not the next meeting, but the meeting after. Mm -hmm. The beginning yeah, of June, yeah, yeah, the, the middle of June. Because yeah. uh, that could, that would be great to you know say, okay, are we testing, and then utilizing the evaluation of here we go phonological awareness. That's the word I can't say. <laughs> Phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension. Those are the big five in in literacy. Thank you, read report. Um, you know, and then the comparable ones in math. And obviously, at some grade levels, some of those are going to be more important than the others. In the elementary school, obviously, the phonological awareness is going to be more important. In the middle school, you're probably not doing a whole lot with that. It's probably more vocabulary. So obviously, what you're evaluating is going to vary a little bit depending on age. But uh, I just think we have to be careful, I do, in not miring you in so much data. And so what <laughs> I've been trying to stick to are sort of big data points yeah. and getting down to a smaller grain size. If the board is asking to be better educated around, you know, what you know what we're trying to teach at different grade levels, then I think that we can put that type of presentation yeah. together. But, you know, looking at kids' progress across different dimensions as it relates to phonetical Right. Phonetical that awareness word. <laughs> you know, not something yeah. I would think would be appropriate. But, yeah. again, that's yeah. That feedback's helpful, and we should continue talking yeah. about that in the yeah. context of a monitor report. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, I guess my thought is when we just, oh, cool, we're in compliance and our kneecaps are great and everything's perfect, having that sort of big picture kind of makes sense. We say, yeah, cool, check it off, and our monitoring reports go pretty quickly. Yeah. But this is one that's just kind of lingered for, yeah. I mean. And, and it has at the national level. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, we commissioned the read report because it was lingering, and that was several years ago. And, 
is still lingering. And so that's why I think, is this the time to bore deeper into that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. We don't want that level of data usually. Yeah. Um, God forbid our meetings would be four hours long. <laughs> but uh, Right. And in the interest of time, I will just bring this part of the conversation yeah. to a close. Um, thank you for bringing that yeah. up. And, um, can can I just do one acknowledgment that I apologize? Absolutely. Because we jumped around in the beginning of the meeting. I, um, I had the opportunity to help um, work on the baseball softball fields, and I just wanted to make a public thank you to the Essex Town Little League, just as a parent I did. Um, shoveled, raked, pulled weeds, and um, I wanted to thank the Essex Town Little League for their commitment to helping us keep up our fields. I think it's a mutually beneficial situation in that they use those fields and they help um, maintain those fields and it feels like a nice situation. I just wanted to say great. thank you. Thank you. That's a great, great thing to mention. Um, so uh, at this point in the meeting, um, I need a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discovering a personnel matter. <laughs> Taking a photograph. Uh, I, need, well, I need a photograph again. I'm sorry. Oh. Because of our friend Rachel's now on the board. Wait so. a second. You know, I need for warning. <laughs> can we do it next week? <laughs> now you have two. I just have to say yes to this. Finally, I can just say no. Yeah, Rachel said she has to freshen up a little. Do you, do you want to dress up? <laughs> I think so she's had sick kids I, for I don't know how long the poor woman has been. I've had four hours of sleep. I know. Yeah. I've had four hours. Who made the motion? I don't oh. know. Uh, we don't have a motion. I don't a motion to go into the motion. Okay. what you're wearing. Can I second the motion? They know what I'm we are now in executive session. Executive photo session. Where would you okay. like to stand or sit? Oh.